What's going on, people? Welcome to a very um, disappointing or exciting day, depending on what side he was on. Patrick Vieira has officially been sacked by Crystal Palace in the early hours of the morning. Um, we haven't had the time to come on up until now, but as always, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to not miss out on future Palace content. We'll be opening up the lines, reading your comment comments, and going through all the stories throughout the day because there's a lot to talk about. It is bigger than Patrick Vieira. There are talks about ownership, civil war going on. There's potential um, the, the successor. It could be um, a former Crystal Palace manager coming back to the club. Where is the club heading towards? And more. we'll be discussing that in more detail. So thank you for everyone that's tuning in live and watching it on replay. I'm joined by Patrick and Stan here. And we'll be opening up the lines later on down the show. But let's start off with you, Stan. I know you haven't got too much time left. Um, but uh, thank you for jumping on anyways. Vieira. He's officially gone. Just your thoughts? It's very disappointing. Very, very, very disappointing. Um, where'd you start? Um, great year last year. I said in September, we spoke about this at the end of the transfer window, he was, he was sold short. Um, he was short a couple of midfielders. He was short a goal scorer. You know, we really had a chance to kick on last year and we didn't do it this year, sorry, and we we didn't do it. I, I, I don't know what goes through the mind of, of Steve Parrish or people that run the club or, you know, any of this. I, I really don't know what go, goes through the minds of these people that feel, um, you know, that, that run this club sometimes. So, you know, everyone around us is kicking on. Um, clubs have been up a lot less than us. I mean, he's, Parrish, Steve Parrish had a four-year head start on Brighton being up and, We've been eclipsed into another stratosphere there. Um, you know, I can understand I was getting frustrated myself with his tactics, his, um, how can you say it, his stubbornness to pick certain players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but, um, yeah, it's uh, a huge, 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 huge shame um, because he understood our club so well. He got our club so well. He knew what we were all about. And they've gone and sacked him. They've got no one up their sleeve at all to bring in. Um, the rumours are Roy Hodgson is coming, which is an absolute joke. Um, and I think, um, what's it called? I think, um, what's it called? And I think the, the it's all going to close in around Parish now. And I think we're going to see what I've been saying for a while, that he's just a, he's a penny-pinching you know, I don't, I don't even know. I don't have words for him, man. He's just a pe he's a penny pinching micromanager who hasn't got the chops for this. Um, and there's argue there's articles come out that John Texter wanted to put thirty million into the club or did get, gave the club thirty million pound, and you know, Parish didn't spend it on any players. It's not been spent. It's I mean, it's a it, it, it's just absolutely ridiculous. This yeah, might. going forward, um, quickly on your thoughts about relegation, does this change your stance? Do you think, um, does it matter now? Do you think that we'll stay up or we'll go down? How do you feel about the situation? I honestly don't care, mate. <laughs> I don't care. And like Patrick, don't you care? Huh? I don't you care? Patrick, me and you have gone at each other on this show a lot this year, and we've had yes. fallings out and whatever. But I think you'll understand where I'm coming from. Like, what's the point? They, this club don't care about us, mate. This club don't care about its fans. This okay. club don't care about... They don't care, you know? Yeah. Um, do I want them in the Premier League? Absolutely. Um, but I just, honestly, like, if they go down, they go down. And if they stay up, well, like, I, I honestly, I don't care. And I, people are going to slate me on here, but... Pff, I've got no influence over this. I'm not. I'm not going to stress myself out and ruin my weekends and ruin my weeks and my, you know, my my moods over over this, mate. I don't care. Like, you know what? Stay up, go down, go down to League One. I still support Palace. Um, I'll be honest. If we go down, don't want to come back up. And I'll, I'll be honest, don't want to come back up because no point, mate. Because it's the same it, old it? crap. And that's what it, it is. is. So I don't it's care. Frustration. I can I can I can feel the frustration even when you're saying it as well. Um yeah. you do care, trust me, you do care. 
Um, it's not like you don't care. You do care. We all care. We all care. That's why we're here talking about it. If you've got idiots running the club, why should I? Why, why should I waste my energy on idiots, mate? You know, and we'll be talking about them people. Trust me, we'll be talking about them people. But I just want to get the overall reaction before you know we go into more detail because, of course, Roy Hodgson is apparently the next in line to come back to the football club. Um, and is it? I am honestly, I've we've gone through way worse times. We have, we've been fighting relegations, we've been you know struggling to score goals and leaking goals and. On the verge of relegation, get relegated, struggling to get promoted. Like we've we've had our times, but today, honestly, I'm telling you, ever since I found out the news, I woke up at 11 a.m. Ever since I found out the news from 11 a.m., we're approaching 11 p.m. I don't think I've raged as much as I've raged today. And the reason why I'm raging is because I don't know where this club is heading. I don't recognise this football club anymore. It's not. It's bigger than Patrick Vieira being sacked, by the way. It's bigger than that. And we'll be talking about that in more detail. But Patrick, I want you to jump in because you was also someone who rated Vieira. Who, you wanted Vieira to have a bit of time. Um, we spoke about it off air. You are frustrated as well. But do you understand the decision on, on why they sacked Vieira? No. But before I go on, I want to apologize to Stan. Stan and I had a major like fallout of, of a month or so ago. And one of the reasons we fell out was because we had an argument about the transfer policy in Parish. And let me tell you, Stan, I apologize because after today and learning what's going on behind the scenes, you were right. You were right. And I'm a, I'm a big enough person to admit it. You know, since yeah. you were right. And I remember it was, it, was, it was over Parish and the transfer. I remember the whole argument. Was, and again, I, I lost my call that day and I apologize. I don't actually apologize to you, but I apologize, man, because seriously, you were right. All right. So I want to get that out. But <laughs> as far as today goes, like D, I found out when I turned on my phone. I mean, my first default is when I wake up in the morning, I turn on my phone on, and my phone was like, was the, the messages were crazy. And all of it from my back of the nest chat, and I knew right away that he had gotten fired without even opening a chat because I never get that many um, things in, in, in a right way in the morning. So, how do I feel? So, it's going to be a bit long, but just bear with me. I supported the kid, the, the team, since I was a child. All right, I was born in Thornton Heath. I walked to the, I could walk to the ground, right down the high street, make a left, head towards Whitehorse, Whitehorse Road, and, and get and, and get to the 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 the, the, uh, to the games. My dad was the first person that went uh, to Palace. He's an immigrant from Jamaica. With my godfather, I started going early seventies, about six years old. I sat in the Whitehorse Road end because Whitehorse Lane end because my brother was a ball boy right behind that goal. So I would, I, when I was so young, I'd, he put me in the front, put my brother, and I would always like bang the hoardings when Palace would come out. If you guys know how that worked, but Glad all over. They played glad all over before they came out, and you banged the hoardings when it came out. I do the kids, so I did that. My dad moved to America early mid seventies. I used to go to Palace by myself as a teenager. Um, if I didn't have the money, my brother would give me the money to go. But if I didn't have the money, what would happen is they would let you come in um, either at half time or they let you come in like right before the game ended. They let you, they let you in. I watched a lot of Palace games like the last ten minutes. You know, they let you into the stadium, all right, or into the, into the. So I enjoyed going alone. I left the year we got we got promoted. Um, when you know 79 when the Burnley thing so I used to go to a lot of academy matches um, you know it was it was just a different feel I saw my big academy friends. I used to watch Vince play I saw Kenny Sanson play I saw Peter Gilbert Billy Gilbert Peter Nicholas all Terry Fenn all gonna come through the academy we won the um, you know the uh, the FA Youth Cup it was great okay I moved to America still Palace through and through because you know what I'm not gonna change my club because I'm a, a thousand miles away I still stay Palace loyal 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 my dad would go, then would go to the shops in Manhattan on a Monday to buy me the paper so I can get the scores. Because back then, hard to get the scores in the 80s. Then I ended up learning to get, I bought a, a, a radio, I bought a short radio, so I listened to BBC World every Saturday morning to listen to the scores. That's how I follow Palace. And then all of a sudden, you know, the internet came around and you could, you know, follow through the internet services, et cetera, et cetera, until today. So I've been a massive Palace fan. I've been through, I've said it before, I've been through seven promotions. And seven relegations. I get it. All right. I'm a massive fan. I've seen the ups and downs. When we hired Vieira, I said to myself, this is great. All right. You've got a manager who's got a reputation as a great player, not a great manager. We're going to be able to get young players. We're going to play academy players. We're going to play a different style of football. It's great. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. He looked like me. He looks like me. And that meant a lot to me. He really does. Having a black manager at Palace meant a lot to me. It really did. We get to today. And I find out we fired the man. And I'm and I'm looking back, I'm saying, okay, 
I've talked on the shows many times before. We've had this ridiculous, ridiculous set of fixtures. Guys, I went back. I did research. You know, I'm a research person, right? I did research. If you go on homesdale.net, you can look, you can pull up every result for Palace from whenever. So I went, I went and looked at every, every, every fixture that we had for the last 10 years in the Premier League. I looked for a stretch of matches that was as bad as the last 12. I couldn't find it. The worst stretch I could find was in 2018 19. We had a five match stretch. All right. Just bear with me. It started with Huddersfield, which is not a good team. We played Huddersfield, but we beat them, right? Then we lost to Spurs 2 0 away. Beat Newcastle 1 0 away. Lost to City, Man City 3 1 at home. Beat, beat Arsenal 3 2 away. And then beat Everton and during the Everton 0 0. After it beat Cardiff. Remember that year we said about Cardiff when Pudge scored mm-hmm. that goal away? Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I swear, I, I looked through, and back then, right, Everton and Newcastle weren't even that good, but let's just, say, let's just say they were mid-table teams. We've never had a stretch, guys, never, where we've played every team above us in a stretch of matches, never in our history of our club, not in the Championship, not in the Premier League. So to fire him now makes no sense. But then I'm getting, you know, people sending me stuff in the chat. Why did he leave? They called the poor man. Not, they didn't fire him face-to-face, Steve Parrish. They called him on the phone. Why they, why, they wanted to find him, apparently. We're going to get to article later on, D. We want to find him last February. Last February, we were like 12th in the league, going for an FA Cup, and they wanted to fire him then. They have not backed this manager except for one window, the first one. We had players out of contract. We signed Mark Gahey, Joe Kim Anderson, Michael Lise, Austin Edward, uh, Will Hughes. And if I missed anybody, let me know. All right, but we had we lost a bunch of players, so we had to fill in the gaps. The next window, um, in the winter, we, we I don't think we, I don't think we, we bought anybody. This summer we bought we got Luke Plunge out on loan, Malcolm Bowie out on loan, Sam Johnston constantly injured, and Check the Corey, who has been really good. So we basically bought one player for the first team. One of the arguments Sam I used to have was I used to say that we, we were backing him, we backed him. I we did not back him, we never backed him. You know, Sam Johnson's not backing the manager. We fast forward to this last window. I went the last minute we signed Nauru Ahamada and Samuel Conga on loan. When apparently, we'll get to the article later, John Texter gave Parrish 30 million pounds this January to spend spend in the window, and we didn't spend it. Somebody help me out. I I don't know what what am I missing? So Guess what Stan said? Yes, I'll always be Palace, but I'm done. I'm done. I can't. What I got? If you if you can, people, go back to YouTube, back of the Nest channel, and go watch me, D, and Hambo watch alongs Roy Hodgson era. No, no, it no, was no, no, no. the <laughs> worst time of my footballing life. I do not exaggerate. I hated it. I can't do that again. I can't. Yes, I like Stan. I want to stay up, but at this point. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. I do not. I cannot watch Palace on the Hudson again. I understand the logic to keep us up, but there's no plan. D said, there's no plan. There's no plan for us to do anything. There's no plan. I heard now, take it for the one, that Alisa wants to leave, Eze wants to leave, and Gehi want to leave. I heard that today they want to leave. Will's not going to come back. What is our future as a club if that is true? No, nah, man, I'm sorry. This this uh, this sacking is a disgrace. It's a disgrace. I, I I can't back it. I can't back it. And I've been a parish backer from day one. I appreciate what he did to keep us up. TBFC 2010. I get all that. But honestly, I'm done with parish. Forget the American owners. I'm gonna, I can I'm gonna get to that later on. We can talk about the how it's broken down, whatever. But right now, for me, parish has to go. It's gotta go. It's, it's honestly he's never it's, going, it's, mate. It's insane. He's it's, never it's, going. He's it's never insane. going. I feel, uh, uh, shall I be honest? Shall I be, this might sound ludicrous, but I feel like we set him up for failure. We did. Uh, in January. Uh, this whole we, this whole season. The fact is, look, we're going to talk about it, but there was a report from the Athletic that they were considering sacking him last year. Last year, February, they were considering sacking him. Do you know how mental that is? And it makes sense now. Everything makes sense. If you're okay. considering sacking a manager last year in February... Everything makes sense. It makes sense why he didn't get back properly in the summer. It makes sense why in January they didn't want to make the only wanted to make loan moves. Not because yep. of the money situation, because they right. didn't believe in him. Yep. They didn't believe in him. And okay. do you know how scary it is? How scary it is the Roy Hodgson we're talking about again? 
We're going back to 2018. Can I make a point? How did we end up here again? Can I make a point, D? So every time in the Patrick Vieira era that I've watched us and we've gone a goal behind and come back to draw, gone a goal behind and come back to win a game, I've always fought back to the Roy Hodgson era. And I remember playing games and it was, you just knew Roy Hodgson. He had a tick against one game and an X <laughs> against another. Right. And some of these games that we came back to draw, they were just Xs. And you just knew as soon as you got a goal behind, that's it, done, lost game. Right? So, I, I don't understand. Listen, results, whatever, the run wasn't the easiest. The results weren't great. I think there was some, there were actually some not bad performances in that run as well. You've got to think about that. The Liverpool game, the Man United at home game, Newcastle at home, we, yeah. we weren't bad. Villa, we were extremely poor. We were very, very poor. That's Man City, agree, game four, we extremely yeah. poor. Um, I actually missed the Brighton game. Um, so I only watched the highlights, but we were good in the first half, not great second half. We were okay yeah, in the first half. We should have been up two two goals. We were, Honestly, well, you know what's ironic? Sorry, I, I just it came to my head, and, mm. and I want everyone to take this in. And it might be sad in a way, but Vieira's us that is mental because there was actually a clip that I, that was posted on back of the nest about Jordan Ayu potentially second Vieira. And I'm not saying it's all Jordan Ayu's fault. What but you mean? If Jordan Ayu didn't lose the ball. Against Brentford, yeah, the I'm Brentford game. game right now. Yep. Are we? You know what I think, team? but you know, Are he was when he was on um, Sky Sports this morning. Parish said he alluded to something. If you listen to it, that um, even at the end of the season, I think they were going to make a change. He just like sort of slyly dropped it in there. If you, uh, Stan, it's a great point. But also, there was a what I read some of the articles today. There's an article that said that. Uh, World Cup break, Vieira wanted to get an extension to his contract and they said they were going to give it to him and they didn't give it to him. So even Vieira was upset. Remember, this is, I think he only has another year left, right? We've been, we've been one more mm -hmm. year after this. He went, And they didn't give it to him. So I think you're right about that. I think that they weren't going to give him the contract and they decided to get rid of him at the end of the year. So you, I think you're, you're spot on with that, mate. Spot on. I think um, the one thing we've got to look at, and let, let me finish the point before we answer it as well, because there's going to be a little bit of a contentious one. So they haven't backed him in transfer in successive transfer windows, right? So over the 10 years in the Premier League, we've had 20 transfer windows. I'd say we've had two good ones, maybe three out of 20 transfer windows, lads. Three out of 20 transfer windows have been good. Players under Vieira did not improve significantly this season. They didn't. Some of them have not had great seasons, let's be honest. And they still, like... That's another reason. Like, why did you not back him in the summer? Why did you not get him that midfielder, get him that striker, get him those one or two fullbacks? Do you know what I mean? I don't understand the mentality of it. Like, what are you trying to do? You've had, like, a really good season. You got to an FA Cup semi-final, and all of a sudden you're like, nah, I don't fancy it, mate. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, seriously. Um, so, about interesting point you make about not improving, and I will say attacking wise, you're right. But like I said, as I said before the show on the show, we are on we are on pace to have the best defensive record we've ever had in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. So I would I would argue that yes, Klein and which are having been great, White has been decent, and I would say Gehinas have definitely improved this year. Mm -hmm. I would say that. So I agree with you about mid, you know, maybe the midfield attacker. But I would say defensively, we've definitely improved. So that's got to be on him, right? Got to give him credit for that. No, you no, you have to. Anderson and Gary right. have been excellent. So, no, they have. Right. They have. White has, has, has pulled us out of, of a couple of games as well, for sure. But attacking wise, you're absolutely right. We have to. And I think yeah. part of it, um, Stan, is the point that D always makes is that people like Klein and Mitchell, or Klein's different. Mike Mitchell has no one to push him all season. So he's out there every week getting picked. Doesn't matter. I play poorly, I'm going to get picked. Don't play great, I'm going to get picked. You know what I mean? And then and Kleine and Wardy, we've had that discussion many times. Don't do that again. But if you're going to get picked anyway, not being pushed. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the lines. Um, and everyone, if you're Vera in, if you're Vera out, you know, feel free to join. Feel free to have your say. Feel free to have your say on the board, on the transfers, whether you agree or disagree. Um, and and yeah, we'll go on from there. But before I do open up the lines, I I, I honestly I'm like I had. I met up with Turkish today um, on AFTV. And even then, in that video, that was the first time I spoke about it, actually. I, I don't know... I don't know how to describe the situation. I don't understand how to describe my frustrations. 
um, without swearing. So I'm just trying to try. I'm trying to keep myself composed. But this, as I said, this is one of the bleakest days that I've seen in a very long time. It's not the fact that Vieira got sacked. There's so many reports coming out. So many reports coming out that I don't know where this club is heading towards. And I'm not even talking about this season. I'll, I'll, I said it before and I'll say it again. Even as much as I like Vieira, even if Vieira stayed until next season, with this current squad, we're still going down. And that's not on Vieira's fault. That's on the board's fault. The investment. Three years we're talking about right back. Three years since wan has left. And our right back options are still Nathaniel Klein and Joe Ward. Now, we will get on to the manager, and we some of you lot did get on to the manager about poor results. But when do you look higher up and, and question the people that's making the decision-making at the football club? Because that's why we're in the position we're in right now. We took away 12 goals in terms of Benteke and Conor Gallagher out of the team. We didn't place them. Ducore wasn't a Gallagher replacement. He's a different player to Gallagher. Lukonga still isn't a Gallagher replacement because he's not a number eight. He's more of a number six slash eight, but he's not outright number eight. We still have two forwards, Eduard and Mateta. We didn't replace Menteke. We still have the left-back position that, that hasn't been sorted in terms of backup to Tarek Mitchell. And that is based on our owners being cheap. Cheap, time and time again. Renewing contracts or players that shouldn't even be at the club at this point. It was a time to move on from the Roy Hodgson era, but we were always cheap. And that cheapness is going to cost us either this season or next season. Because teams are spending and they're not spending for the sake of it. They're bringing in better quality players. They're trying to improve their squads. And we're still talking about not even replacing a right back. Nathaniel Klein is hey. right back in 2023. And this is no being harsh on Nathaniel Klein, but we needed to solve these positions. If they show no ambition, Roy Hodgson is the best we can do. Why would company want to come? Why would Carrick want to come? Oh, Did you not see him team rubbish team? us in a, in his press conference this morning? Exactly. He spoke the truth. He spoke the yeah, truth. I know, but that's what company I'm saying. Company said the right. truth. People are talking, so, about, talk, so here, people are talking here, about company should come to the club. Why would not should no the company or any and, other young manager that's aspirations to grow the football club come to the club after all the reports that's been leaking? We've and you know what? Why should they come to the football club? Yeah. Where has the ambition been shown? Only one good transfer window, Dave. and then after sacking the manager based on the run of results that we've had, ain't good enough. Go ahead. Dave. It's another rebuild, another new manager. So it's what two years, same same thing again. And I just let you guys know, Steve Parish owns ten percent of this club. Steve Parish is paid ten mil, no, sorry, three million pound a year. To run this pays himself three million pound a year to run this football club. So he's on so Steve Parrish himself is on Premier League wages. He don't even play for he don't even play. He's on Premier so, League wages. So we'll expand on that, right? So the article that came out today talked about how Text owns 40%. Um Parish owns 10 and Harrison Biss owns 25 and 25. So the reason why Parish has, has the to, to say because he has what we call a golden share. So he can say whatever he wants, he can be there whatever he wants. To me, that's ludicrous. People who have been trashing Harrison Blitz that wanted to get out, can you blame them? They put up money and they have no, they basically have no say. Texter, Chris, I'm all you want. And that's fine. You know, he owns Brother Fogo, Leon, we're talking about Palace. Right. He put in money in January and Parrish refuses, refuses to spend that money because Parrish had the last say. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. If that ownership model does, it's not going to work. It can't work. But, and as D said, we're going yeah. down either this season or next, and it's inevitable. So what's next? So, so, so by been... the way, by the way, I want to say one thing. Brighton have gone through much worse than we have. They lost their manager, they lost their backroom staff, they lost yeah. their most important players. Yeah. And right now they're fighting for top four. So let me ask you this question for people that still have faith in Steve Parish, because I can officially announce that today, until something is proven wrong and something drastically changes, I am done with Steve Parish. Yeah, if out. it's a case Parrish, of out. If it's a case of hiring, if it's a case of hiring Patrick Vieira to move on to the next level, and then you end up with Roy Hodgson at the end of that process, <laughs> that sums it up. That's his limit. That's, that's, that's his limit. Say, there yeah. is no ambition. There um, is no ambition. That's his limit. And I'm and I'm tired, and I'm tired of just constantly being in the cycle. This season we shouldn't be in a relegation battle. This season we should have strengthened the squad. This season we shouldn't be talking about Roy Hodgson back at the football club in 2023. That was a period that was done and dusted. 
The fact that they sacked... First of all, we're going to talk about it. But first of all, how on earth does it make sense to sack Patrick Vieira and bring in Roy Hodgson when you're struggling to score goals? Since when did Roy Hodgson make us a goal-scoring team? Since when was that a thing? Do they know what they're yeah. doing? Brighton get rid of managers and they're bringing a better manager. We get rid of right. managers and we're bringing a manager right. that wasn't a su su success for us about three, four years ago. All right. Yeah. So I don't know I what got, I got something to lighten the mood, lads. I got something yeah. to lighten the mood. Go ahead, sir. I, 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 got a little, go ahead. I got a little song that maybe the HF should start singing because it's quite apt. <laughs> go ahead. Fuck off, Stephen Dougie. Where's the fucking money? <laughs> it's all lies, <laughs> lies, lies. lies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I've got to follow up what Steve just said, right? Because he makes a really good point. So, um, you know, people may or may not know, I live in America, and on the pre-match show today, they talked about the firing. Robbie Mostow was on and um, Danny Higginbotham. And they both said they hate the fact that they got sacked. And one of the reasons Higginbotham said is that he's been in relegation back in his whole career. And he says, what you do when you get a new manager is you want to be defensively sound. But he made the point that Palace don't have a problem defensively. We can't score goals. So why are you bringing in a manager who already is going to help us stop scoring, uh, stop de defending well, when we only could do that, but we can't score goals? Hodge is not going to solve that problem. So what, I don't understand the logic in firing a manager who was defensively sound, gave up, lost games 1-0, admittedly, you know, had the 1-1 against Brentford, but we, we need to score goals. How is he going to help us do that? By having 10 behind the ball and counter-attacking. I mean, we was really not conceding that many goals against top opponents as it was. Right. That was the one strength right. of our game on the field. One against we City, goals, but well, we was actually one City, we right, kept the clean right. sheet against Liverpool. I mean, we and, got and, against yeah, Man United yeah. and Newcastle the one... three times, three times against Newcastle in the cup. So it doesn't make any is... sense of getting rid of a manager and then bringing in another manager that doesn't know how to deal with the attack. How on earth does that make sense? We're struggling to score goals and you bring a manager that, like, when is the cycle going to end? When will it end? What is the plan going forward? Because right now they seem clueless. They seem clueless. They sacked Vieira for the sake of it. And we're talking about going into the Arsenal game with Paddy McCarthy. I'm behind Paddy McCarthy. Don't get me wrong. But there, there, there isn't any plan. And Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson is our best alternative right now. I mean, wh where does that bring us? Is But look, uh, go ahead, Stan. Um, and then the guests are also going to be coming on soon cool. as Can well. I just if ask, you want to call in, uh, is, click on the Is Steve comment. Parrish tone deaf? Because like, why does, like, I, I just don't get the whole, like, I'm going to bring back Roy. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you that scared of getting relegated, Steve? Like, what's it? What's what, what's going to get exposed if we do go down? Do you know what I mean? What's actually, you know, because it's starting to unravel around you, mate. Do you know what I mean? Right? So, you know, Dougie's covering up for you and doing this and doing that. Trust me, this this is this is just the beginning. Um, and honestly, like Looney CPFC just said, who would you prefer, Hodgson or McCarthy? Honestly, I'd rather Paddy Mac to the end of the season. Um, if it's not Vieira, do you know what I mean? If, if we if we actually had to choose, but that's it. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go. Um, hey, cheers, Dan. Cheers, lads. All right, take care. Take care, All right, then. Uh, let us stand. There's now people waiting on uh, behind the scenes. Um, if you guys want to join and have your say, make sure to click on the pinned comment to join in and. Yeah, just lay it out, whatever you're thinking, whether you think um, it was the right decision, wrong decision, this, that, you want Roy, you don't want Roy, feel free, feel free to join. Um, as always, we want you guys to join, we, we encourage it, um, but look, let's bring on Nick first. Nick, how you doing? Been making you wait for a while, sorry about that. Um, that's all right, I've been in the green room with all the others waiting, so um, yeah, that's good. It's been, yeah, there's a lot of people a lot of people right waiting. so um, i'll get straight into it i've even made notes here right you went on a rant about brighton doing so well tony bloom their chairman gambled big and he won yep. how many teams gamble big and lose and look where sunderland are and look where stoke are and look where but, okay but Nick, on, get, let, say... let me finish let me let me finish this point uh, patrick then you can sure. come in parish won't gamble okay i know perhaps i sort of flowered up the Brighton bit, but um, Parrish won't gamble. He's, he likes to be safe. He likes to be safe. Now, Vieira was our third choice, wasn't he? We had Favre and then somebody else. So already yeah. he had that hanging over him when he came in. Now, I'm going to go back to what Patrick said earlier about the type of manager we had who represents. And I'm totally with you there, Patrick. Do you know what I mean? Having a black manager... South London, 
attracting lots and lots of players in. Yeah. That I was proud of us for that. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we are seeing a better mix of people in the ground, which is, you know, should be it's more, but it's, it's, it's yeah. good. It was good PR, better than Ed, Edgar Davids was anyway. DR, do you remember we went to a lot of games last season? First one, Chelsea away. We didn't have Gallagher because he was loaned to us. And the highlight of our team was Raksaki. Now, yeah. thinking back to that game, think think back to last season, what good games did we have? We had Wolves away. That was sublime, wasn't it? Absolutely yeah, sublime. We talked them 3-0. It was so easy. It was so easy. Yeah, and Wolves, Wolves ain't mugs. We had the 2-0 against Man City, probably the best away day. Probably, yeah, that's mainly that down well. to where you park, though, but I got quite merry afterwards. Um, but wasn't that good. We had we didn't have many moments like that. We had Watford, which was funny, um, but what Watford were crap anyway, which brings me on to Hodgson as an ex-manager. No, I'd rather have Scott Parker, and I don't want Scott Parker. Um, <laughs> Patrick's <laughs> laughing there. Um, so... <laughs> Roy would just be a step backwards. No, he's like 10 steps back, not one. He's 10 steps well, back. Well, yeah. I'm serious. Exactly. I want to answer Ten your point back. about Tony Bloom and him gambling and taking risks to push the club on. I want to talk about that too, but go ahead. I want to talk about that too. Um, go ahead. Do you want to go? Dave, I don't know about you, Nick, but I don't think it's a case of he gambled and spent a crazy amount of money and didn't have, you know, and, and all of a sudden the players worked out. Their, their scouting system is incredible. Their academy they're still bringing in plays is, is, is incredible. The fact that they can get rid of a manager and a backroom staff like Graham Potter after they're doing well is incredible. You know, you have to give them praise when it's true. I don't think it's a case of just gambling for the sake of gambling. They've got a proper scouting system. They know what to do if the Zerbi was to leave right now and they're headed in the right direction. And that's why they're there now. I don't think it's a case of they just took a gamble with no actual plan. They had a plan. They executed it. Now, right now, when you look at our situation... We got rid of Patrick Vieira. Now, Patrick Vieira didn't do as well. Sorry, dear, just uh, before we go on, he got into loads of debt, man. And he's only just paying it off because it's paid off. But they were in so much debt at one point, Brighton. He put so, it all on red. So, so, you know, it was a gamble. All right, it's worked. But how many other clubs have done that? It's not, so, not so, very often, so Nick, is it? Where, so, so, Nick, where do we go? Where do we go from here? I mean, if we're not going to gamble, if you don't have no money, where do you go from, go from here? Because the Premier League is only getting richer. Um, teams are only getting stronger. And for me, all right, I, I understand your point about um, Tony Bloom spending money and putting the club in debt, but he put a club in debt, but he set up an infrastructure. That infrastructure is now paying off. They and we've so set up an infrastructure and we've but, got Joe Whitworth in goal. No, we've got Joe Whitworth in goal. It's not being utilised properly. Okay, it's only in its infancy. But that will bear fruit. Okay, but that will bear comes... fruit. And the good thing about Patrick Paddy McCarthy, Patrick McCarthy, St. Pa St. Paddy's Day, um, is if he's there for two or three games, he knows those youth teams. Patrick, you follow those games, don't you? Because you're retired now and you're, you're almost as obsessed as with Palace as Jerry is on the Facebook. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> no, not, no one's like that. No one that yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, it's it, it's just the Palace way, in it? And you say the worst time, D. The worst time was when we thought we were going out of business. And I'm not going to pipe up with the, oh, yeah, at least we're still going because that's that's long gone now. That's the years ago. We've got kids coming who weren't into the games who weren't even born then now. We've probably got kids near the first team that weren't even born then. Um, so are we in a better place than we were when he came in? We're, we're 12th in the league, okay, that, that points gap has gone down. But, as we said in the WhatsApp chat earlier, Patrick, Vieira would have won at least three games, wouldn't he? To keep us up for the rest of the season, 100%. Let me just go to your Tony Bloom point, though, seriously, Nick, because, I mean, the comparison is funny. Tony Bloom is a professional gambler. You do know that, right? I know, yeah, minutes. yeah. So, you say he, he gambled. He gambled because he knows what he's doing. So he's not like he, he gambled, you know. He owns a club in Belgium called Union Saint Gilois. Is, they are second in the league and they are in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. The man knows what he's doing. We can't compare him to, to, to Parrish. He is heads and shoulders way above Parrish. He's way above him. He does gamble, but he gambles because he knows what he's doing. So that's why I bring up that top. Tony Bloom is a bloody genius. He really is. 
Okay. And the comparison to Brighton is laughable at this point because that club is run much, much better than we will ever be run because Tony Bloom not only gambles, but knows what he's doing and has a plan. Not just the Brighton, all the clubs that he owns. I just want if, to put that um, If uh, this goes out again, can we bleep that bit out where he said the Brighton chairman was a genius because we just don't want to come back to many Brighton <laughs> fans because, you know, that, that's going to get clipped. Fact, and you've got an eagle right in your like, corner. I, 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 the by the way, Nick, I, I, I have to say, I have to say one thing. There, there's different ways of gambling. You can gamble with money. You can gamble with ideas. We This Vieira thing was a gamble. It was a gamble. Yeah, yeah, it was. He was the first choice manager. He doesn't have the experience. Who else was there? Experience. It was a gamble. But then, then again... We we just pulled a plug. It's, it, it took us one season to pull the plug. I'm not even going to count the second season because we still didn't back him in the second season. We didn't no. back him in the second season to build and in areas that we needed to build. So this club is so risk averse that they're just thinking about. And I understand but, in terms of business, and I I completely but agree just thinking with you. About the, you're going. I completely agree with you, but Parish, okay, put yourself in Parish's shoes. Says he doesn't read social media, but he can't have helped but got the bad vibes going around, especially with the atmosphere at Sellers not being quite up to scratch. I mean, I could hear the I'm megaphone against reading. Liverpool. Reading. You definitely. know, I shouldn't be able to hear the megaphone from the HF. And maybe it's the way the wind was blowing. I couldn't smell tasty jerk, so that's probably uh, why. It's awful. It's awful. Um, it's awful. But it's, awful. it's... I'm gutted he's gone, really gutted he's gone. But Parish, we're three points off the drop now. We went into 13th briefly this evening at some no, point. No, but Forrest lost. No, uh, but, Forrest, but Forrest, lost. Forrest lost. And no, no, I'm not right. saying I'm, I'm completely right. agreeing with you here, Patrick. I don't right. think we were going to go down with Pat with with Vieira. Right. I'm so gutted he's gone. Gutted he's gone. But from Parrish's point is, what if things aren't working? Which looking at all the reports and what uh, was written in the Athletic as well that we've shared round. What's been going on behind the scenes? I wrote in in the YouTube chat earlier. Was Vieira too nice? Because he was a different Vieira to the tough guy on the pitch, wasn't he? Completely different. He was a teddy bear um, compared to what he was like as a player. Why that didn't get instilled into our players, I don't know. Maybe the only one who instilled it was Decore, but you know. Okay, what you can get in so again. no we got we could we, we what i'm saying is yeah it's a big mistake but parish doesn't want to take the risk but i think it's a parish big parish Roy Hodgson, thinks Roy Hodgson literally got what for the relegate though nick not too long i know ago. but we haven't and announced time, Hodgson yet have we they are get but, upset but, when it happens get upset but, when it happens that's what the talks are that's the talks all the reputable sources are saying don't get the club. okay if Roy Hodgson joins the club would you be happy with that no, I'm not going to be happy with that at all. But don't get upset till it happens. Yeah. And then rage. The wise old the man happens, taught me. The wise like old man, man taught me man. last year when I was really ill. If if it's if you don't know for certain something's going to be, then don't think that's going to be. Okay. And when it is, you can worry about it. But I'm worried about it right now because if that yet. happens, I feel like we're in a worse position. Okay. And then position. if Scott Parker happens, that's even worse than that. If well, Paddy McCarthy manages to bring to a few Scott youth in. Uh, Scott Mark, he hasn't been mentioned. Scott Park is not going to happen. Roy Hodgson, yeah. David Ornstein's reported it. Talks what everyone that is reputable is reporting gonna, it. It's, it's as well as happen. the odds dropping down on him. He is the favourite yeah. right now. So if we're talking about potential replacement, now that Vieira's gone, it seems like it's going to be him. It seems like it's all lined up for him. People around the club, everyone is basically leaning on Roy Hodgson. So if it does happen, then what? Are we, you no. just fucking play Steve Parrish, that video of, of us tonking Watford and not bothered Watford 4-1 at their place last year and the crowd not being even bothered to boo, then it'll put him off. If Steve oh, Parrish yeah. is clever. Now, are the Americans <laughs> thinking this uh, ex-Leeds manager? Why are we going for managers that have kind of failed? Is it because there's no managers that are and good? No, no, Nick, no, hold up. The Zerbi, was the, was the Zerbi just in the Premier League? Was there no manager? And that is my point. I feel like other clubs have a system. Even Brentford, they have a system in place. 
their signings, they don't spend big amount of money, but they bring good signings because they have a proper scouting system in place. And when oh, it comes to even the, the likes of Brighton, they they didn't they didn't go for the typical managers that's been mentioned. All the managers that we that we're after right now, that's but been we've mentioned, built the, the academy. Managers. That's well, maybe that's a gamble he's taken. He's thought, right, I've spent all this money on an academy. I'm not going to spend loads of money trying to find players that will fit straight in. We'll ride it out for a couple of years and let them come through, like we did when we were in the championship when Scallon and Co came through because they were exciting Nick, to watch. I, I listen, I, I think you're right, but that's a, a gamble that Parish can't afford to make. I agree with you. I think he put a lot of stuff into the stadium and then the academy. But you, we can't wait three years. We won't be in the Premier League in three years. By the way, how much did he way. put in? How much did he put in in comparison to the in comparison to the people that actually put in the money? Like, nah, we're that was talking about get, that was Texter. We're, we're talking, texter. yeah, we're talking about Academy was Texter, so it's not even Parish's money. You get it? Is it, it, it? John Texter came in and, and sorted that out. And now we're talking about Main Stand, which is of course the American owners when they came in. That that was the talks then. Harrison Blitzer. Um, right. So in terms of Steve Parrish and Gambit, he's got is other people's money. And by the way, Nick, before you go, let me let me get your thoughts on this. There's reports suggesting that there's like a civil war going on um, in terms of our ownership group. Right we saw it in scenes, January yeah. as well. There were reports coming out that John Texas and Steve Parrish are not getting along. How does that make you feel in this whole process? Whatever happened to the phrase boardroom bust up civil war that's fucking ukraine and russia you know what i mean yeah, let's, let's not over exaggerate let's let's not over exaggerate these avengers. things avengers avengers civil war you didn't see it did you not yeah, see it yeah 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 it's, it's still going oh. on it's a, it's a long <laughs> film it's a long <laughs> long film long. anyway well, look before i get off just to put things in perspective i want to put this out there to john program seller he's going for a really shite time with his son at the moment um I don't think Ch Charlie's had cancer for a number of years. It's inoperable and yeah. it's it's not going to be too long now. So if you follow John on Twitter, just send him a bit of love and support. And 100%. it does it does put all of this in perspective. And you know what, D? Whatever fucking happens, mate, we'll still be here in a year, two years, three years, moaning more weeks than we're happy, regardless of who's the manager, who's in the team and what division we're in. We'll still be there at the Palace. And that's what, um, that's what we want to get rid of. And last year, there was there was a change. We weren't, of course, it was moaning a bit and saying last minute goals and stuff. But for the first time, Nick, I thought, you know what, we're, we're heading in the right direction. We're bringing in young players, yeah. a young manager. We're looking up the table rather than down. Good cup run. But right now, I know, I know you're saying that we've gone for worse times, but right now it seems like we just yes. that's all gone. We're back to I am usual palace. I, I'm aware you've got people in the green room, but just one yeah. more thing. Um, do you? Um, I was. I'm so gutted that it hasn't worked out. From do you think only being at 18 months at Nice and kind of reading back and looking back on what we read about him, the same things kind of happened again. So we we we're almost never going to know what how he over if he could ever overcome these sort of adversities and turn it around somewhere else after his 18 month honeymoon or his honeymoon period is over who knows i don't know i can't answer I that I don't, I who don't knows know. i don't know and you, you know backroom squad exactly reading about just, them it's yeah. you know you've got other people to discuss that with i thought i'd get me 10 pence worth in while i could this week and uh yeah. thanks a lot Nick. Great talk and it's you, good man. to see you both on. again. And uh, yeah, are you buddy. going? Are you going on Sunday, Dee? No, I'm not. No. <sighs> boy so you won't. Miss you'll, you'll miss Paddy's famous win, mate. Yeah. No yeah, faith, yeah. you. Well, anyway, good to see you all. <laughs> it'll be Roy's Up the Palace. Alright, take all right, care. And then see you later, Nick. Thank you for coming on. Uh, if the people that's waiting on behind the scenes, we already got the order in place. So if you guys want to leave and join back after, uh, next up we're gonna have Jared. Then we're gonna have Henry. Then uh, Patrick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and Jamal. So if you I'm guys already here. want to leave and join back, yeah, you Patrick, can. I'm already here. Vieira's here. Vieira's here. <laughs> oh, the other Patrick, the Hudson lover. Can't wait to talk to him. <laughs> I see. I see you in agreement, with Pat. I see you, mate. I see you. <laughs> but let's bring on Jared. He's been waiting for a while. Um, Jared, <laughs> welcome to the show, Vieira. Sacked. Um, your reactions <laughs> to it? How you feeling? Uh, it's disappointing. Obviously, um, I don't believe he deserved to go. Clearly, the team was playing for him. The defense was tight. You can't score goals for the strikers. It got to a point where we tried to be open early. That Spurs game when we lost four 0 It's when he decided to, you know, shell up a little bit. 
and then you have to be clinical because you'll have less chances and we weren't clinical. That's simply what happened. The thing that bothers me is like the overall idea of the ownership. They really hitched their um, they hitched their wagons to Riera, to Vieira. To be honest, a lot of those signings didn't get over the line until Vieira came. 100%. At least they did not get over the line till Vieira talked right. to his parents. Gay he. Chris, yeah, Who's Chris Richards' parents mm. went to Rich dinner with Vieira. Also, yep, that's right. I forgot about him. I forgot I, about Richards. Yeah. I think that Parrish and the board underestimate the lack of pull Palace has. Without <laughs> a big name, they do. But on, I really think they do. Man. They, yep. they don't get it. Uh, yep. when you rip a manager like Vera away from a squad like this, especially when you look at the complexion of the squad, they have a black manager. It's gonna be a, it's gonna rip at them a little bit. It will, and whether they want to be demotivated or not, psychologically, it does. You tend to get down a little bit, even if you don't want to. So, in the summer, we're facing a real. Uh, a real issue because I think there are a lot of players who are going to want to leave whether they leave or not is another matter, but there are a few guys who are going to want to leave. And when that happens, Paris and them are going to find out how hard it is to get players back in. There's Look at the rumors, manager. Jared. There's the only rumors of at least say oh. as a and gay. Oh. There's only rumors out that they want to leave. They're so gone. Right They're that. gone. Yeah. They're You're gone. Right. And I don't blame You're them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame them. And think about like, what manager is going to come. You just sent the message that we don't have a project. We're concerned about stability. So no matter what happens, if things get tight, we don't trust you. We're pulling the plug. No project go. manager is coming under that circumstance. Yep. So you're going to be stuck with grizzled vets or desperate guys who will get a paycheck. So to be honest, I'm not upset with Roy Hodgson coming in. I, I don't care what happens. If he keeps us up, great. If he doesn't, whatever. But for me, I, I don't like blindly following people without a plan. If I see someone walking off a cliff, I let them do it, and let I turn go. around and go the other way. Exactly. That, that's just me. Talking yeah, a lot of no, sense, I agree. A lot of I, sense I agree. I agree with a lot of things that you said there. So in terms of the manager, Roy Hodgson, if he if he did come in, um, that's the favourites right now anyways. Um, we'll see what happens with that. But a lot of people are yeah. upset with that, um, not just us. And I'm not just saying that because that's how I feel. There are genuinely a lot of people upset with Roy coming back to the club. Um, do you think he'll be able to keep us up? Um, he doesn't fix any of the issues that we had. So I, I don't see how that could work, to be honest with you. He's a sit back defensive manager. We were already sitting back well and not conceding goals. So I don't, I don't see what changes with him. Um, I see people who, the, the, obviously I think the players will respect him and play for him, but I, I just think the style that he plays were, I don't think it's going to help us given the opposition we're facing. Those guys are going to be desperate. They're going to be coming at us with everything they got. Everyone in the table is fighting to avoid relegation. So you have to be aggressive. You can't be in your shell. And we're going to be in our shell. So I I don't rate our chances, to be honest with you. It is what it is. Um, who, who would you want to come in? Out of all them names that's been mentioned. So the names that's been... In a short list, I'll bring it up um, in in just a bit. But here and Stephen Gerrard was there. Frank Lampard was there. No, um, no. Paddy McCarthy staying on for for to the uh, to the end of the season. Uh, is there anyone in particular that you has to tool? That's what people have been saying as well. Anyone in particular that you think could do a better job than Roy? Maybe. Um, Hassan Hudo plays a really narrow formation. Um, he's really focused on one phase of play, which is counter pressing. So yeah. if, if a team is not um, being open and trying to pass out of the back against you, he's going to have an issue if a team sits back. So yeah. that's not going to work. <laughs> Frank Lampard is just too helter skelter wide open. Hell no. Uh, Hell no. Absolutely not. Hell we'll no. ship goals. No. Um, Gerard doesn't have a system without um, – what's his name? McCritchley, I think. Crichley? Nah, Bill. Crichley, Bill. Yeah, Michael, Bill. Neil Crichley. Yeah, Neil Crichley. Uh, and I've been talking about Michael Crichley Bill. Left, yeah, Ma- it kind of collapsed. It, it kind of collapsed after Michael Bill. He left um, to join. Yeah, yeah, Bill, yeah, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, yeah Bill's yeah, gone. So Gerard has it. Yeah. Gerard's brain is gone. So he can't do it. Um. Yeah, just give it to McCarthy. You know why? Because at least McCarthy's worked with a couple of these guys. He's been in and around the first team, so you might as well. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. That's pretty much it. And you know what? I have no expectations of McCarthy. I hope he enjoys it. And to be (laughs) honest, um, the fans who uh, want McCarthy eventually, if he doesn't perform, they'll slate him too. 
That's how it is. Fans <laughs> exactly. are fickle. They'll, they'll tear into him too. So I, point, I feel sorry. Friend. To be honest, Great I feel point. sorry for him. I do. I feel yeah. sorry for him. He's getting put into a position he shouldn't be in. No win situation, yeah. Literally well, two games, two days before a game like Arsenal is it's not going to be easy. But let's see what happens with that situation. But look, Jared, thank you for coming on. We appreciate your time. Appreciate yeah, it, man. Great stuff, man. Really Take appreciate care. you, man. Take care. Take care. That was Jared. Next up, we're going to bring on Henry. Uh, he's been also waiting for a while as well. Henry, how you doing? You're right. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, uh, it's finally happened. Vieira's gone. Yeah. Yes, finally. How happened. do you feel about that? Um, I think it's the right decision. I mean, I know you guys disagree, but um, I'm not. I'm. I'm obviously not happy to see it happen though, because I really wanted it to work. Like you know, I respect the guy, but yeah, um, it's. I think it's very true. Like that, the problems run way deeper than just Patrick Vieira. Um, but I think just some of the things that he said, his decisions, um, I think it just didn't bode well. And um, but I mean, if they get Hodgson back, Jesus, Christ, like if they do that, like but, it's just the definition of insanity. If but they do that. Henry, I, I want to stop you there. I want to ask you this question: As someone who wanted Vieira out, who right. did you want to come into the club after Vieira did leave? Because that's the biggest question, and I've asked these people. I've asked. I've I've heard Ozil Roberts should stay. Vieira second man. I've I've heard yeah, he's that when he's Vieira second man. I don't. I don't know why. I want to keep? I've heard different names. I've heard Zidane and Poch. I'm. That's the last time I'm mentioning that because that is absolutely wild. Why <laughs> would Zidane and Pochettino want to come to Crystal Palace? So that's not going to happen. Um. So, realistically, do you have someone in mind, or do you just want Vieira gone? Well, in the short term, I think. Paddy McCarthy or Sean Derry. I don't think Sean Derry is, is going to happen. I think one of them two, or both of them, I would take to the end of the season. Long term, I think, like, maybe Lucien Favre. Because he gets they, the fight they, at Nice. They, they planned. Yeah, well, he's someone's he's been, he's he's the Vieira. Vieira was fired at Nice as well. Yeah, Vieira did a better job. No, he's but... Got fired at... No, but the thing is, the thing is about Vieira, right? I, the thing I don't get is, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get well, the thing I don't understand is, is, yeah, we've had ridiculously bad fixtures, but look at how we have played in the majority of those games, and look at the after the Brighton game. Like, did you honestly feel any kind of optimism about the rest of the season? I yeah, because like, we had easier fixtures coming up. I hundred percent did. After Arsenal, 100 percent I felt because we weren't leaking goals, and I figured we can we can we got to win three more matches basically at the end of the season. So do we think we win three out of the next eleven, whatever? 100 percent I did think we could do that. So yeah, I had no problem with that. I had no problem no, with that, Henry. I had no problem with that, that, honestly. The only the only thing that I'll say is after the Brighton game, the one positive was that first half. And let's be honest, if Edward could finish, if Edisa could finish one on one, we're probably two 0 up against Brighton. Yeah, but why can't they? There must be a reason why they can't finish that. But, but I mean, I don't know what. That's Vieira on the manager. Could... Is that on the yeah, manager? Think... Yeah, it is on the manager. How? Because Edward had the Edward had wait, one... okay, hold on. Edward had the brand an uh, open header, and that's the manager's fault. Because if seriously, some... nah, no. come on, man. No, nah, no, nah, 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 no, no, no. Nah, it's not on the manager. Let's blame the players. That's not on the manager. I don't want no. That's not on the manager. No, I'm sorry. He had a free header, and he said had a one on one on the keeper, and you're blaming Vieira. Just say you hate the man and be honest, man. That's no, ridiculous. I'm not having that. No, I don't no, hate him. Sorry. Hate you must not like the guy. Uh, okay. Could you be ridiculous? That's you can blame that on the manager. Well, Henry... The guy had a one on one on the keeper. Let me just finish. And as a free header, you're saying it's on the manager. How? How is it on the manager? I'll okay, tell you how if you let me. Because <laughs> he picked them. You're right, because he picked them. That's right. No, no, not because he picks them. Because he's because the ma it's the manager's job to instill confidence in the players, right? And if Edouard doesn't have the confidence in himself, he's not going to score. Why didn't he have the confidence? Because he how doesn't play enough. Elise, Elise is not confident? No, one -on -one. none of the he's team is confident. Oh, okay, none right. none of the team is confident. Right. Like it's 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 ridiculous. Like Edwards is expected to score goals when he hasn't been starting games, so of course he's going to miss chances. And whose fault is that? Like who, whose fault is it that he's not playing? The manager because he picks the teams. Yeah, yes. I mean, 
I mean, should, that's yeah. <laughs> so you think just a run of games? So you think Edward not having the run of games that was needed? Um, it, it, is the re- I mean, is the reason why it's just incon- inconsistent lineups, inconsistent tactics, the same excuses every week. Like, you can't go 12 games without a win. You can't go three games in a row without a shot on target. You can't do those things and expect to keep your job. You just can't. Mm. Like so, as I mentioned, there's, um, I've, uh, there, there, there is Roy Hodgson that we spoke about. Uh, there's other, there's other names that's being mentioned as well. But you're not happy with that, but I, no. I mean, I mean, I mean you it's... mentioned. Okay, I just want to bring up one point as well. I just want to bring up one point as well, and this point has been going around for so long, and I'm actually sick and tired of it. It's not personal to you, Henry, or anything like that. But why on mm. earth does Sean Derry keep getting mentioned? What have because, we seen? What have we seen about Sean Derry? He got fired for chastising the team when they played so bad against Hold up. Okay, okay. so w- what point of Sean Derry's managerial career have we seen that he's going to keep us up that Vieira couldn't? Nothing. Because we're but, talking about... But, crucially, he knows what passion and fight is. And Vieira but, but doesn't. Henry, but, but Henry, the game has changed. It's not just about shouting at players. There's different ways of approaching. Yeah, it's, of course. It's not, but, a case of, it's not a case never, of shouting at players. And... and but why? And, and one, why, thing that, why, one thing that I want to say, I want to, I want to, I want to ask, yeah. why is, why have not, have, why haven't we seen performances reflecting of Patrick Vieira the player? Patrick Vieira the player was a warrior. You know, he didn't take any nonsense. He, he was a fan. He was just, he was up there with the Roy Kings. Do do we see performances reflective of that? No, we see performances that are soft, and then behind the scenes. His actions are soft as well. That's mm. my point. Mm. But that's the thing. This theory about Sean Derry, there was just that one report about Vieira didn't like the way that Sean Derry approached with players. No, First of all, we don't even know the full story. Reports. No, we don't. But we don't know the full story though. We act on here like we 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 had access to the dressing room and that Sean Derry all he done was shout and Patrick Vieira said no. There might be other stuff about the coaching stuff. We might have even not have done his role properly. We don't even know. Why, why, no, why I mean, has Sean Derry become? Why has Sean Derry become such a big talking point? I don't understand. At what point was Sean Derry Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp that that I've missed? Then no, he's we, not. We talk he's, about... he's still a great influence to have. You have those characters, but you don't know if he's a great influence to have. You don't know how these players are reacting, Henry. And that's my whole point. A player that you're talking about. We, we, we always talk about oh Sean Derry. He was he was getting onto the players, but we don't know if his man management approach was was what the players wanted. Is not the 1990s, it's 2023. The players yeah, don't not, react I'm the not... same way. The players yeah, don't react the same not, way. The group about... of players that we have might not appreciate the way that Sean Derry was talking to them. They're grown ass men, they're like 29, 30 years old. If Sean Derry shouting at them and, and belittling, uh, belittling them, and, and that's not motivating the players, then doesn't that make the situation worse? Now, I'm giving a scenario, I'm not saying that's what happened, but what I'm point, pointing out is you don't know what happened, I don't know what happened. Vieira clearly didn't rate Sean Derry. He got rid of him. But Sean Derry, as a manager, hasn't happened before. And I, I, I don't understand how getting rid of Patrick Vieira and bringing in Sean Derry as a manager is going to solve our issues. At what point does that prove that? I mean, we might as well just hire, we might as well keep Paddy McCarthy. Or well, we might McCarthy as well bring in the, someone else. Like, yeah, but if you apply the same, what, what, you can apply the same logic to McCarthy as well, because you've seen nothing of McCarthy as a manager either. And you don't know what, what he's done. Though. Uh, I don't know where Henry went. D. Where did Henry go? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Sean, Sean Derry managed North County in League One and Cambridge United in League Two. How is he qualified to be a Premier League some top manager? I'm not saying he's not a decent coach. But I'm just saying, why would we think that he's a great manager when he, he's led a League Two side and League One side? I, I, I'm missing something. But anyway, is what it I is. don't know. I, 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 look, I, this Sean Derry thing has been going on for a while. And, and I've... And I've um... I've kept quiet about it because I'm just letting it slide. But well, people acting like Sean Derry is the reason why we're in this position. It just, it's just, it's, it's crazy. I mean, this guy was, he's just a coach and stuff. Uh, for Patrick Vieira, the, like, why? Do, uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what people have seen that I haven't seen or what people have heard that I haven't heard. But this Sean Derry influence, I don't know how, how he, um, how it happened. And by the way, I did not cut off Henry. So let's not, Talk rubbish. That that didn't happen. See, and that's, I'm not even against simply that. Simply put, so, Sean Derry is a stick to beat Vieira with. That's what he is. He's a great stick to beat him with. That's all it is. So we we move. 
next. You didn't. Yeah. I didn't come off. I would have cut him off. By the way, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I could, I would have cut him off. I didn't. I just went on yeah. mute. So, all right, it is uh, what it is. But he got his points okay. across. So we move. If you guys want to join, have your say. Click on the pinned comment. Feel free. Vera in, Vera out. Um, and and yeah, whatever, whatever you're feeling, uh, whether it's the board or the ownership. But let's bring on Patrick next. Who's been waiting? Then we'll bring on Jamal and then Dan. Patrick, how you feeling? Uh, real quick. To, to Henry, hand in your palace card, man. I don't know what all due respect. I... No, 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 no. It's okay. No, it's, it's okay. It's an opinion. opinion. Everyone you know, has their own I, opinion, I, Patrick. I, you're right. And I was going to say something, but I, I don't want to open that can of worms. I'm, I'm, I've turned positive over the course of weeks. So, first of all, Vieira shouldn't have been fired. I'm not his biggest fan, but he shouldn't have been fired. People are talk. Uh, what was their arguments about his substitutions, his constant change of the li lineups, all these things. Now, I'm a big I, – I like Roy, but do you think Roy was going to do any different? No. You know what you get. You get that two <laughs> banks of four. You get that 4-4-2. Four, four, you get bad substitutions in the 75th minute. I make jokes about Roy because I think some of the fan base disrespected him towards the end, but this firing is crazy. It's just – it makes no sense. And the question I want to ask, Patrick, because you, you went through all the owners, what, Goldberg – was it Goldberg, Nodes, Jordan – when Simon Jordan's making sense this morning and the Palace fans are agreeing with him, that's yeah, just not good. Cool. And, it, and I, I always wonder, and I don't know enough about it. I've read Simon Jordan's book about how he lost the team and different things like that. But it's almost like, is there any kind of secret thing we don't know about Parrish? Because it's, like it's, it's like you're starting to see what he's really like now. Okay, so the, un, the, the thing that you have to read between lines in that book is that when um we were going to administration when when um jordan did that whole thing with the with the hedge fund mm -hmm. the rumor is that parish knew about it knew that jordan was going to be in trouble it went behind him to get the club at a small at a lower price which is what happened it's now true. parish denies it and that's why you every time you hear jordan about parish he'll give him a a snide comment and you always right. get it he'll never give it right and that's exactly right. why he feels that he stole the club from him and on purpose not just came at the last minute as a hero but actually went behind his back i don't know the truth i'm just saying that's the okay. rumor that he knew and that's why you've okay. got this whole parish jordan thing for years and years and years so that is okay. what that is so yeah now for the record obviously i think steve Parrish is 10 times better and more successful oh, running the club I, I so, agree. I agree. So, so with that but with this with this firing uh, i just I don't get where the club's going. Like, for me, I'm like, look, I made the joke about Roy Hodson last week. Look, if you're going to bring anyone in out of that last list of garbage that you just gave, it would be Big Sam. And I don't understand. He's he's I on the damn I mentioned podcast. that, too. I, mentioned he, that too. I, I that. said that last week. It's 12 games. The defense is already set. All he, I think Big Sam's good enough to put a proper striker in a proper place. He's not going to put and, wealth up top. Right. And Pat, and Pat, your great point is that at least under him, we played good football and we yeah. spent money for the guy. I mean, and we bought him players. So, that's I mean, because he was going to use Steve Parrish as a long dart if they didn't, if he didn't do it. I mean, exactly. I mean, I mean, and then, and I always thought him leaving. He says later on he it was because away. of health. Right. I, I don't yeah, believe. Yeah. I don't yeah. believe no, that. He walked, it was. It was. It, it was he a Parrish. Same way Judas left. It was. It was Parrish. It was yeah. Parrish. So, Judas, Judas so because of Parrish, yeah, you know, Abigail and, Parrish. And in, yeah, so. and in public, Big Sam's always been complimentative of Steve Parrish. So he has, he has. why would you not? And he did play. I mean, the counterattack football and the victories he got at Liverpool blew Arsenal yeah. off the wall. I mean, I mean, yeah. over and over he saved our ass. Yeah. Sorry about right. that. So I'll take that. Me, I'll take that well, on Hudson. I would. I'm a I'm a fan of Hudson, but he's 75 years old. Big Sam is maybe too young for the Palace job. I don't know. He he's just he's a big. I mean, I mean, I don't know. It just to me, it makes sense. I, it just right. it makes sense. Now, as for Vieira, look, I mean, he made mistakes. I think he, I think he would have managed thirteen points to get to forty out of the last ten games. I, I mean, agree. you know, I don't like the idea he played Schalp and IU and all that. But he, yeah. let's be honest, his choices weren't exactly that much better. The only thing I can say about Roy is, as they played better under him, if you just look at it towards back, the end. Back. Yeah, I, I, right. that's the only. Right. I would love to see Roy get to come back and get the respect he, he deserves for what he did, but I also am scared that, well, Watford. I mean, do we need to go any further? That that it is going to happen. So you're going to get. You, it's going to happen. He's going to be back. He's going to be whether it's Sunday or after Sunday. He's going to be back. So we're well, going to get to see I, it. So you'll get to I, see. I, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not no, watch no, it. no, no, no. What I learned under Roy is you got to put it on the radio. 
I can't watch talk sport, talk sport but, or BBC One for me. Yeah, I hear. Uh, BBC. Well, we get B. Well, you're in New York, so you get BBC Sound. BBC Sounds. Yeah, I exactly. listen to TuneIn yeah. Radio. TuneIn Radio app gets the Premier League for like nine ninety nine for the year or whatever. Right. I'll That's do it that. Do, I cannot People. watch. I'm play. I'm playing golf on Saturdays and hoping we win. Patrick, are you? Are you? So, are you shocked about him being sacked now before uh, the Arsenal game? The timing of it. No, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't. At least I don't think they wanted him going get his last game as Palace manager against his former team. I don't. I don't think that would have been. I mean, it's already pathetic that they fired wow. him over the team, but disgusting. I don't think. I don't think they would have fired. I don't. It wouldn't. It would have looked worse if you fire him after he loses to his old team. That's just garbage. That's interesting. And to be honest with you, if you weren't, and it goes back, if you weren't going to back him, then why? did you even let him come back this year? If you truly have the money and you didn't believe in him, forget not hiring him because nobody else wanted the job because they walked right. away compared to stale ass. Or, again, sorry, but it's just sorry. emotion comes out. I'm a Philadelphia. What the hell? So, um, <laughs> and screw the Nick no emotion. I'm emotional as well. Trust me. To feel yeah, free to say whatever you want to say. I heard that when I left the other day off the show, but all real quick though. But I mean, no, I mean, I mean, it's just, it's just not, it's not cool. And I don't know the golden share. Is there no way to buy this man out? I'm like, look, you only could go no. so far to be fair. Right. So unless Big Sam's coming to them and throwing them out of the thing, the only way you get them out is you do what West Ham fans did, where you quietly hold a protest in the stadium, fifty thousand people going towards the owners. I'm not condoning that, but right. you you get the point. It's not good. And then you're talking about half the young guys want to leave. I mean, it's that's that's kind of major. It's, it's, it's a shambles. To shambles. In, in, you know, in, we're starting again. Say what? We're starting again. Yeah. Every, well, every, we, we're just starting again. You think Wilfred Zaha is coming back to that shit show? You can forget nah, that. Yeah, he's done. If he was, a, no, if no. there any chance he might might have stayed, it's, those chances are absolutely gone now. So we've got what ten more matches with him, and that's all we've yeah. got. And that's and that yeah. is what it is. But it's not happening. And then, and, and and then you're looking at like all the interviews they've done. What was it? Sean Dice three times. He even he didn't want to touch it. So. It makes you just, it's starting to. Point. It, would, it would have been Daesh funny enough. Yeah, with the, it would yeah. have been Daesh funny enough. Yeah, it would have been Daesh 100% would have been Daesh. And, and, and Daesh is going to take Everton and take about 10 more one nothing wins and they'll be safe. And then he'll build okay. a stable team where he could have done that here. I know Patrick doesn't want to watch that kind of football, but. No, I mean, honestly, I think he gets a batter. I'm not, I'm not totally anti Daesh. I mean, he got him into Europe for God's sake. I would take that. Do you know what I mean, Pat? But I mean, I just don't love it. But I would take that over even Hudson Ball. I mean, Daesh I, does I, make changes. I'll he take, does the, do I'll take him over all the, all the names that's yeah, been mentioned. I mean, Trust me, I'll take yeah. Sean Daesh over all the names that's been mentioned. So. I, I, really, we I can't like, have him, so there's no point. I, I, I like Sean Dice because he had two 50 point seasons and two top 10 finishes at Burnley. Yeah. At Burnley. Exactly, yeah, Burnley, exactly. Like, exactly. With a Burnley. smaller budget, by the way, and worse owners. 100%. And worse owners. Yep. So I don't know where we go from here, guys. I don't know. Uh, we all, like, get behind for Sunday. Uh, if I'm Patty McCarthy, what I do, I, I, I it's your one game in charge, put balls to the wall, put t take D's ID, put Anderson and idea, put Anderson in the midfield, play play mm -hmm. Richard, put the best players in on the pitch, or go three at the back. I mean, something. This is your one chance. Don't, I mean, right, you play man. your best player. Richards is a good center back. We're good for three center backs. Put Schultz at the wing back. I don't know what you're going to do on the right. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, why not? It's just I one just, shot. I just one, fear for yeah. us on Sunday. I really do. Well, look, awesome. I appreciate you coming on, Patrick. Any other things that you want to say before we move on? Um, do you still yeah. – Do you, how do you feel yeah. about the board? And uh, we're going we're gonna to try the reports, by the way, because when I just say Civil War, it's not me exaggerating it. That's what the report literally said, and it's coming from the Times, which I'll show as well. And they've yeah. reported a few stuff. Um, so it's not just me making it up. They, they literally no, – no, no, I, I, they like, the headline is um, from the Times, and I'll show the author as well. Owners clash and wage bill slash – Besides civil war at Crystal Palace, but yeah, I, I think I look if we can drive all four of them out. You already know how I feel about the owners anyway, so I don't need to go back. <laughs> on that. The only question I got is: Are you guys going to have like a, a another show about the ownership situation? Maybe after the season or or, or somewhere in there. Or, I mean, I trust me, there's going to be. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of a lot of shows um, happening about manager. 
about owners. It's probably going to be more stories that's coming out. As I said, we're going to be covering the stories briefly, hearing what you guys want to say. And then afterwards, we might do individual videos on certain sections that needs to be talked about. I think the ownership probably has to be talked about because, you know, it starts from the top. And and yeah, we we I think we might have to do it. But then again, there's also coming up. We got other content, so maybe next week during the tertiary break, we will have a bit of time to you know sort out the other bits of news that we haven't been able to cover in depth today. Okay, well, thanks a lot, guys, for me take let me take your time. Patrick, man, yeah. thanks for having really you. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Take care. Take care. That was Patrick. Next up, we got Jamal. Jamal, you've been waiting for a while, bro. So sorry about it. So sorry about everyone that's been waiting as well. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of people that's um, calling in. How are you feeling, man? How are you feeling? We spoke only just a few days ago about Vieira, about the club. And now he's gone. It's done. End of an era. I'm sad. I'm actually sad. What are you I'm sad about? Sad. Is, is it I'm, just sad, I'm sad, sad that... I'm sad that he's gone. He... It's difficult for me to express my feelings about Pat Trevere as a coach, right? For Crystal Palace. We were singing, we had songs for Pat Trevere. The whole last year, I think it was around just before the, just before we went, we went to Wembley, I was singing. I had my girlfriend singing, my family singing, everyone was singing. We got Mitchell in the back, Elise in the top. We going all the way to Wembley. I didn't mean <laughs> I was just randomly say. I mean like the good times, man. I I mean just randomly say it, or just randomly. I mean like going through my day working, and it was just the feeling of joy of playing, attacking, pressing. For we had defense scared. We we gobble up guys. We we. <laughs> It's, I'm I'm sad. I'm 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 very sad. I'm very very do you, sad. Do you understand the reason why he was do, sad? One win. I don't. Two. How do you feel about that? I don't understand the reason why because there's more question than answers. What questions? As simple got? as that. I be. Mean, why no? Why no? First of it, why no? Why did he get fired now? Why you didn't fire him two months ago? Why you didn't fire him at the beginning of the season? Why no? Why we having yeah? Let me just let's solve the question. Why we having issues with financing and getting players? Why did you back the manager? I I mean the the main one I want to talk about that no one really talked about was Coyote. Why did we get rid of Coyote? Check. To be fair, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest, Jamal. Coyote mm -hmm. get rid of Coyote. I don't think it was a bad move um, because. We got rid of Kiate, but it's about what you do with that. Because as I said, you have to move on from some of these players. You can bring in more technical players. I feel like Decore as a number six was was is a very good technical player, and he can contribute a bit more in terms of picking up the ball in in defense and then uh, you know pinging out the forward passes, which I don't think Kiate had in his locker. But my yeah. issue is more than is is improving the squad at that level. So. You get rid of Kiate, bring in Decore, but then you also basically lose James McArthur. You also lose Conor Gallagher. Um, you lose Ben Teke. I mean, there's been gaps. The squad has regressed. I think that's where the problem for me comes from anyway. But I don't know how I was thinking. I wasn't too upset about Kiyata leaving because as I said, there has to be other players that need to leave. Sooner rather than later, we probably have to get rid of, you know, one of Joe Wood and the final clan. We have to improve there. We have to improve up front as well, get rid of Mateta. So these players will have to leave, but it's about the ambition that you show when they leave. And we didn't, for me, anyways, I don't feel like we showed ambition. We didn't replace some of these players that left. And we're still talking about it now. We had two windows um, and spent the least amount of money in the Premier League, which makes no sense for me. Yeah, I, I agree. But I also believe that in terms with Coyote, we should have kept him. He wanted two years on his contract. We should have found a better way to negotiate with him. So, well, we'll give you another year. But if your performance is well or if you meet a certain quarter, we'll give you another year. He was one of the players that was pivotal to the team. Anytime we had a, a center back that was injured, he could fill it in. He was disciplined. He understood the team. I'm not saying he, he did not have a far pass in his book. That's fine. But he knew how to break up the play. He knew how to control the rhythm of the team defensively. And when he left, for some reason, I'm sure that he was one of Pat Trevere's main guys in that team. 
he could have called on him. He, he's a train. He, from what I've seen, he's trained well in training. Defensively, he was he was good as well. And for me, losing him was very because we we put um, Chet Chet Kowati, not Chet, the other guy, um, Decore. We put Decore yeah. straight in. We didn't right. give him time to get accustomed to the Premier League. If he still had Coyote, Coyote did, it could have helped help him integrate himself in the team right but that's me personally that was my that was my in terms of the that transfer him leaving the club was very very hard for me to take because i i look back at the performances because don't forget when gallagher and those guys went forward coyote did not leave he stood and broke the play if anything happened everybody got back and when we had said about issues he also filled in and did a good job but i know we got um two good center backs now so it's only when yeah. somebody get a red card, or whatever. But holistically, it, there are too many. There are too many variables in terms of financially, in terms of, in terms of the. We know that a certain players that came to the club because of Pat Trevere, we would not be able to pull players from. Why would you leave Chelsea to come to, to Crystal Palace? <laughs> not, I don't know. I don't know why you would leave. Why, a lot why of would you be the Palace MVP right of the championship and then come to Crystal Palace? These guys and the reason why these guys came was because of Patrick. Jamal, so now, a great one thing because I want to interrupt. Sorry, because the year before we were linked with Connor Gallagher when we had Roy Hodgson, he went to West Brom instead. The correct. minute that, he, was, that. Got, he left, Vieira comes in, we got Gallagher on loan. It's not correct. a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Now, funny so. enough, I don't want to be that guy, but at least say I, I was here doing videos about transfers and Alicia was in yep. it for a while before before even Patrick didn't, Vieira didn't come. and exactly didn't come in. and you know, when Patrick Vieira joined he came in after what two weeks three weeks um when Vieira joined and you know he was a the manager then Roy Hodgson was a the manager then and now he might still end up with Roy Hodgson as the manager which look I feel like the pool is is definitely gone down but it depends on who we bring in in summer at that in the short term, it seems like the replacement ain't going to be that great in the first place that players are going to want to come at Palace and play for Palace. But depends on what we do in the summer. But for you, Jamal, um, in terms of going forward, are you two questions? One, you know, some people, they're still happy with the ownership. Do some people are upset. How do you feel about the ownership of the club and how the club has been run? And two, who would you want to bring in? Is Roy good enough for you till the end of the season? In terms of the ownership, there's nothing much I could do. My opinion doesn't really matter. I think that's a more that's a question for the higher guys, the guys in top level to sort it out. Because when money is involved, football is second. These guys don't let you lose losing money. And if, for example, like I run a club and they give Patrick, for example, thirty million dollars to buy players, and he puts it in his pocket, how do you think I'm going to feel? You have allocation of funds. You have a budget. The budget is to buy players, but yet you you increase in something else. You're using it for right. to build a city or whatever. You have I give you 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 came to me as an investor. You need money to strengthen the squad. And you don't how 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 can I react? So that's the reason why I don't really want to comment on that because that's high level. Those guys will start out. And what was the second question in regards to the um Sir Sir, Sir Roy? Yeah, about Roy. Well who else who else are we gonna get? As Patrick said, if you Guardiola or or or, 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 or any top manager is going to come to the club, no, you you can't build a project. If you if you are not going to back back Patrick, why are you going to back me? Right. If I I'm, I'm serious, if I was a coach and I coming in and I interview right. for Palace, you did not back the previous manager. Right. How, how are you going to back me? And, and and that's it, Jamal. It's not a matter of um trying to get like a top level manager like Pep or whatever Pochino. We won't get anybody because you just said it. We don't back our managers. So why right. would you come in? We can't get we're gonna get we're gonna get guys who are desperate for a job. Who wants that? I don't want a desperate manager coming who's not any good. If you're desperate, you're probably not any good. I'm not saying every manager's not any good, but the chance of getting a decent manager have fallen tremendously. It's it's ridiculous, yeah. man. Yeah. Look, um, Jamal, any other last words that you want to say? Of course, I will probably yeah. be here when the manager gets announced as well, getting everyone's thoughts. But um, anything that you want to add? I'm 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 sad. I, I don't have anything else to say. I just want to come on and tell you all guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for coming on and being honest to tell you how you feel. Right? Um, mm. 
we we we, mm. we know we got issues in in the Premiership in terms of having certain skin colors available, and we yeah. the only black manager that we have in the Premiership is no gone. So I mean, I, who who you want the kids to look up to people? And I, I, if you look at the, how how he how he was as a person, talking about around Croydon, yeah. you know, the, 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 I mean, it was well, totally different from what it was with, with Hudson. Yeah. It, it just it it just felt different. But at the end of the day, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. <sighs> All right, guys. Yeah. Nice talk. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, Jamal. Really Thanks for Jamal coming on. Care, right? Appreciate your time. Right, I really Take appreciate your time, bro. Take care. Bye-bye. That was Jamal. Um, I want to also quickly say before I bring on Dan H, who's been waiting for a while and needs to go because he has he's got things to do tomorrow. Um, I want to say that Henry also posted it. He said that his phone died. Please, let's not act like I'll remove someone. I've said it to Patrick lots of times behind the scenes as well. This is not what I want to push or whatever. I'll have my opinions, but just because you agree or disagree with me, I'll never push you off the channel. You have you have all the right. I don't care what you say. You have all the right to come on this channel and have your say. That's the type of platform that I want to try to build here anyways. Um, look, Dan, you've been waiting for a while. Dan H, how you doing? Yeah, what's up, man? <clears throat> just want to um, say that. Yeah, frustrated, man. <laughs> Sorry. Just want to say that I was on the fence with Vieira. Like, I think it's a collective thing, isn't it? Like, it's, it's, it's his fault, but it's also the board's to blame as well. Because he didn't get the backing that he deserved. Like, the whole the midfield is ripped out <laughs> the whole of last season. It was ripped out. We didn't replace Kiate, we didn't replace Gallagher, we didn't replace MacArthur. We just signed one in Decore. Uh, we didn't we didn't have that middle ground between Decore and between Decore and Eze. Um, so, yeah, but also as well, Vieira's to blame because he didn't. He didn't utilize the squad with like Hughes. He kept playing Shillop, Eze, Decore, and that, that midfield was too soft. Kept playing at least say as a cam, IU. It it didn't really work, so he didn't really have the balance. So I, I understand why he was sacked. I was on board with Ryan sacking him. But the, the thing that's pissed me off is when we're going back to Roy Hodgson. Like we've we've paid millions of pounds to move away from that style of play. And now we've gone. We've gone back to it. You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't get where this club is going at the moment. So, yeah. Um, if if it ain't who who would you? It's, it's hard one because I know like I don't want to put you on the spot because we're not mm. the ones that's making the decisions. But who would you have liked to see? Would you like to see a, a younger manager similar to what Vieira, someone to build a club around, or was there anyone I, else in particular that you wanted in the short term? At the moment, I would have gone with Ralph. At the moment, um, mm. but I would. I'm with everyone else. I'd rather see Paddy McCarthy over Hodgson at the moment because it's just something we don't know what we, we yeah, we just don't know what we're gonna get with Paddy. But I think he would galvanize the fan base. And at the moment, that's what we need. Because we're we're in crisis at the moment. We're in crisis. Like I don't I don't understand it. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's it is it is a bit frustrating. Looking into the Arsenal game, um, just quickly, Ooh. how do you how do you feel about that one? New manager bounce? Is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we can see. We can see. But like, mm, I don't see. I don't see it happening. No. Mm. No. Yeah. Look, appreciate you coming on, bro. Any other things that you want to add before you go? Or no, I think that's it. Thanks for giving me a few minutes, but I better head out now. So yeah, right, no man, worries. Thanks, no man. worries. Appreciate you coming appreciate, on. Man. Take, Take care. care. That was Dan having to say. Uh, let's bring on. Let me check the order. Let's bring on Yim next, who's been waiting for a while. Uh, Yim, are you there? The Arsenal fan. It should be interesting. Hey man, how you doing? Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm not doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can hear you. We can hear you. We're not doing good. Not doing good. I'm pretty sure you're you're doing well. Top of the league, <laughs> comfortable. I remember. I remember before uh, there was there was comparisons. Um, do you guys want to swap Arteta for Vieira? I remember them times as well where Arsenal fans were saying that. And, and times have changed now. Um, but yeah, what would Funny you like enough, to say about the Vieira situation? As a new Funny team? enough, I would be one of the few to say I would take Vieira at Arsenal. Wow. To be honest, I've been following Vieira since he started management for some time right. now. And the situation that's been 
at, that's happening at Palace right now, it was very similar to what happened at Nice. <laughs> because let's be honest, at, you know Nice is not really a big club, but he took them to right. Europe. He did Europa League first season, seventh place. Yeah, first season ever. Yeah. And the next season, they literally sold everyone. Exactly. <laughs> no. They back. literally sold. Like San Maximan was there. There was, there was yep. a number of good players in that squad. And Vieira. Chelsea, the defender for Chelsea, went to Chelsea. Guy, yeah, went to yeah, 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 yeah. And defender. and. At Palace, you lost Benteke. Um, you've lost Gallagher. Gallagher was a big miss. That was a big loss, actually. And I'm not going to lie. I felt like he was hard done by in the transfer window. I'm not going to lie. I felt like this season... And I'm not going to lie. You guys are finishing the same position basically as last year. You're still 12. It's not a really bad position. All things considered, like, in fact, with the circumstances at at large, this is not bad. Actually, I was actually shocked this morning when I found out that he was sacked, <laughs> and the timing also for me is horrible. You're playing against oh. Arsenal, right? Who are <laughs> these guys want to probably win it to just get off that Europa League uh, loss? Yep, and. Now they have players like Jesus is back. Like these guys are I but the thing is I think you have one thing over us. You haven't beaten us at home at the Emirates in four years. Which yeah, is wild. Since 2018. since 2018, yeah. I was I was literally talking yeah. to um I was talking to Turkish today, James today from like AFTV. They're feeling yeah, more yeah, comfortable. Yeah. They're feeling more comfortable. Um yeah, they're they're more excited about the game now that Vera's gone because they they had a feeling that because Vera's job was on the line and that there was pressure that He'll come to the Emirates and the players will perform for him. Um, and now that fact is gone, there's a bit more <laughs> confidence Yo, like, in terms of it's, the game coming up. It's it's sad. Like, I, you know what? Like, I thought like this was going to be... I mean, this was a project. Even Wenger gave his blessing for this project. Exactly. The man yeah. himself, Arsene, gave yeah. his blessing for this project. I felt like this was an opportunity to see something a bit different from Palace. Like, when you picked there, I was like, ah, you guys are going to go a different way, moving away from the Roy Hodgson era, and respectfully, respectfully to Roy. Um, But you're moving, you're doing something a bit different, pressing, taking on teams. Like, I was thinking this is a new era. This is something different. You have players like Olise, Ize, um, Edouard. You have have very good players in that squad, actually. Um, And um, is it uh, Anderson? Yeah, Anderson is... A phenomenal defender, in my view. But I felt like yeah. I felt I felt like this season. I feel like it's a bit hard done by you. Didn't replace Gallagher. You lost a lot of players this time round, and they didn't help him in the market. And like I'm not even surprised by the results. I am not. I'm generally not surprised by the results because they haven't backed him. At least help him. I don't know what's happening in the background, but this for me is not just like a loss for just for representation's sake, but also a loss of like an intriguing and genuinely good quality manager in the league. I I, I feel like this is a sad day for for football. I'm not gonna lie. This was I felt like it was hard done but people say, oh yeah, it was coming, it was coming. What did you expect <laughs> him to do? People saying he's a weak man. He's not. He's far from that actually. Exactly. I, I, I feel like he was hard done by I don't feel like he was backed and I hope, listen I, and also I have a, a, a potential candidate but I feel like You're with the board and whatever uh, it's a long yeah. shot it's a long shot this is like dreamland this is dreamland but I heard Carrick's Carrick linked I heard, my, Carrick, my, I heard Michael Carrick's linked with the job and yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah. Got... So here's the thing, um, yeah, I understand. Uh, I wouldn't be totally against Michael Carrick, but again, Carrick has he's gonna he's gonna get middle of the world probably to the playoffs. I'm gonna assume in the championships, it might come up anyway. Again, he's not gonna get back when he comes here. So if I'm Michael Carrick now and I'm an up and coming man, and my first real job is at Middlesbrough, I can get them up. Why am I coming to Palace? And I just saw what happened to. Um, uh, uh, to um, Patrick Vieira. Am I going to come here and not get back and then 
So if things go wrong, I'm going to get sacked next season or sometime. I mean, that's a great shout. I don't have a problem with it. Experience is a little bit issue for me, but he's not going to come back. He's not going to get back. So, and that's the issue I have is that yeah. we fired a manager and now we put it out there that, guess what? Our project is over, by the way. We're just fine, fine mm. for the next two, three seasons. We're not going to get, that's what, that's what, project, we're not going to get anybody decent because they're all going to know you're not going to be back. We didn't back Hodgson, which I understood why, because he was leaving, blah, blah, blah. And we didn't yeah. back Vieira. So why would you come to Palace? It's a conundrum mm. that is cannot be solved. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's well, Vincent Company came out and said, uh, Vincent Company came out and basically said, yeah. that he's, he's, he's shot <laughs> like he can't believe, he can't believe that right. we sacked him. Because, and funny enough, he had a lot of knowledge. He didn't even talk about just the results. He, he looked at the results, he looked at the fixtures, and he said, even in some yeah. of those games, Zaha was out injured, and you know, a few other key players was out injured. And he it, knew. it's true. Yeah. Like, he did he, know, yeah. He, his research and that's why it was a bit um that's why it's a bit surprising but yim quickly before you go uh the game on sunday how you feeling feel free man feel free to say how exactly you're feeling we're not going to judge you don't worry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know i'm i'm one of the very few arsenal fans who's like pessimistic actually about winning the league i'm not gonna even lie it's unbelievable that we're top wow. of the league it's nuts <laughs> actually this is a crazy season um I feel like Ateta needs to put a full squad this weekend and for him to, because right now we're like literally what, the last 11 games, right? So right. we need yeah. to like win most of them, barring four, which I'm very concerned about. And those four are Chelsea, Newcastle, Liverpool and City. Those are, but barring those games, we should be winning the rest and this should be one of them. The problem I have with the Palace game for many years, is that Palace are very tough, very physical, very difficult. Genuinely, this sacking is a loss. It's a massive loss. But Aiki, I have a feeling there might be a new manager bounce, but if not, I feel like it will be a, like an easy win and a simple 2-0 win if, before the international break. I, I'm not going to lie. This, I think you guys would have had a chance if you had Vera this weekend. Okay. Because no, thank you for coming you're, on. Yeah. So, so, yeah. No, so thank, no, coffee. thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank no, you. No, 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 coming on. Free, Feel free Take care, guys. Apart, from, apart from Sunday, don't come on a Sunday unless we win. <laughs> 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 All right. Cheers, guys. Right, take care. Take right, care, mate. Later. Cheers. Uh, let's bring on Dan. He's been waiting for a while. Then after we'll have on Chris. But if you guys want to join in and have your safe, click on the pinned comment. Dan, how you doing? It's only been a few days, but... In a few days, we got rid of the manager, um, and it seems like we're just—it's all going off with with the ownership, with the you know no manager, and it's it's a bit crazy right now. How how are you feeling about the whole situation, uh, mate? Um, um, I don't know really. I'm frustrated, upset, angry, all rolled into one. Really, you know, I, I was on there the other day, and I was speaking to you two, actually, the other day. Um, it was the match reaction, and like you know, it, it's just come as a it's not come as a complete shock and it's not come as a surprise, but you know, for we didn't, we didn't even, we haven't even packed him, you know, and you know, for, for them, step for them, for that stuff that you've been saying earlier on today about how they was going to sack him in February last year, that's just ludicrous, that's just crazy. You know, why would any manager in their right mind now even entertain the Palace job? Exactly. Yeah, the Athletic. Yeah, we're going to go through the Athletic um, article in just a bit after we go through the callers. But yeah, so I'm looking at right now, the Athletic is written by uh, Matt Wisdom, who's, who's reliable on David Hornstein. He's, he's one of the best journalists out there. Um, they, they, they literally said it, we can reveal. And the first thing is Palace gives serious consideration to second Vieira in February to, to, um, in last year, basically 2022. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it was it was um, it was a consideration, which is very surprising to hear. I'll just say that I, I didn't I didn't think that we would even consider. I mean, it's serious, serious as well um, consideration. But um, and so in terms of you, um, you're surprised about him being even considered to be sacked last year. What's your view on the board situation? There's a few people who are happy with Steve Parish. Some people want him gone. Some people want Texas gone. With, you, with the ownership that we have right now in the structure, are you confident that we could, you know, push on from this? Is it one step back bit, and then... 
to be brutally honest with you, D, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about what's gone on with the board. You know, like I'm hearing bits and bobs and all that stuff. But I said it before, and I'll say it again. I think Paris is a mug. You know, what I mean, I don't. I don't like the guy at all. You know, I, I don't care to be in his presence. Um, I think the guy's just a total tool and a total idiot. Money grabbing. See you next Tuesday. You know what I mean? And he's seen Palace basically, and <clears throat> he's seen Palace as a as a oh yeah, that's that's a bit of money there for me. I think I'll go and jump in on board with that. You know, sleep with the enemy sort of thing. And you know, basically he's he's, he's made his money. You know, and and he's got the golden ticket, as people say. You know, he's got the golden touch, and you know he can't be touched. So. You know he can do as he please. He can do as he pleases, really. You know, I mean, he's just, he's just, uh, he's just now, he's just now feeding the pond, feeding the pond, feeding the pond. You know, you can't do nothing to me. You can't do nothing to me. So I, I seriously, I seriously would consider a, a Saudi backed or, or, or I'm dead against, I'm dead against the Saudis buying football clubs and stuff like that. But I would seriously consider someone, someone filthy rich. Like a Saudi Arabian king or or whatever, coming in, buying him out, and let's let's just start off start off again from basics and, and, and go forward. You know what, Dan? I've never considered that until today. I'm with you. I would never want a Saudi to own Paris, you know. But honestly, after after today and after what I'm hearing, I'd be happy if someone come in and buy everybody out and have a rich no, owner I, and just because I'm done. I'm sick. I'm sick and no. tired. I'm sick and tired of it all the time. Everything yeah. that comes out of everyone's mouth about Palace yep. is, oh yeah, the way the, the way you run your club is absolutely toffee. You know, I've been a Palace fan since I was. I've been a Palace fan since I was a little boy. You know, my first ever game I went to was um, Palace versus Charlton in the playoffs um, when Ray Houghton scored. Um, right, right, was, right. I think it was ninety four, maybe ninety five. I'm not too sure. My second game was the Wembley one when Steve Carrick scored in the last minute. The Shinner, so, yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah, that's 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 those those are my experiences at Palace, you know. Got, yeah. And yeah. I've been through the rough times. I've been through the good times. I went to Huddersfield when we lost seven one away from home on a cold Tuesday night. You know, you know, you, you take the rough with the smooth with Palace, but it's now time for us to stand together as fans and say enough's enough. Enough's enough. We want our club back. We want our club run properly. If you can't do it, then do one, mate. You know, we we had a march. We we done a march. Um, we done a we done a march numerous amounts of years ago about um something or other. The way the club was being run by Mark, I think it was Mark Goldberg. And you know, we eventually the eventually he he got run out of the club or or whatever. But yeah, you know, I I just don't know what to suggest anymore. Until something changes at the top, then we're seriously we're seriously in the shit. Mm. Do you think we'll stay up this season if it if it is Hodgson that comes in? Um, he's uh, the favourite uh, right now, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens. But, yeah. My heart my heart is saying my heart is saying yes because I love Palace and obviously you know I won't have a bad word said about it. But my head is saying if Hodgson comes in, no, no. I don't. I don't think we stand a chance at all. If I'm being brutally honest, I'm. I'm. I'm putting my. But I'm putting my bets on literally teams that are worse than us. I'm just trying to think. Unless it goes horribly wrong and we lose to the likes name of me, that's wait, thing. Can you, uh, name, can you name three hand. teams that are worse than us, though, D? Honestly, I can name. Hand, I can name hand two. on your heart. Hand on I your can heart. Name can two, you yeah. name three teams that are worse than us? Southampton, Bournemouth are definitely worse than us. And I'll stop there because I think the rest of them can get away out of it. I think some of them are definitely worse than us. I don't. I'm not sure about now. Forest, maybe Leeds. I'm not really sure about them. Not West Ham. Forest, Forest, like to go down. Forest, West Ham got, down. Forest have got a dirty one in. You know what I mean? So that's that's, they do. that's something. That's something. But they're good. At, good they're good at home. home except for today. Thank yeah, God. but they're, we they're play. We play them at home. We play Southampton away, and we play Bournemouth at home. That's so the right. future's in our hands. That's. It can it yeah, can also go wrong yeah. though. It can go against us in a way, because not really many people talk about this. But we've got these winnable games. But if we don't win these winnable games, and then Fresh teams below us are yeah. literally closing in on us, so it makes you want me, it even you want more me to tell you, you want me to tell you who my pick would have been as a short term manager. Oh. Rafael Benitez. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Why would he come? Yeah. It's not bad. I mean, 
Yeah, I, I like the way. I mean, yeah. I guess he's, Rafa Benitez, he's, he's crying out for a job. He's desperate for a job. He wants a job. Give him a short term contract. Let's see how he does. What? Yeah. What? But, what but then I don't know happen? if you want a short term contract. That's the thing with Roy. Yeah. You can get away with it. Like he <laughs> could, you could, you know, you can have a short term contract. But with Benitez, first of all, I don't long know if you want to come to Palace. But uh, second, long I don't know long, if want, long long yeah. time now. I want that Nuno. I want that Nuno Spiria Santo. Really. Even after we yeah. did it, um, Spurs last season. Yeah, but he, he, look what he done at Wolves. No, I know he did great Spurs at Wolves. Is, I'm just saying. Uh, Spurs is a big job. Yeah, it's, too big. Yeah, it's, too big. Spurs, Spurs is a big job. They demand you. They demand yeah. you. It's it's a demand. And he's been successful at Spurs game. as well. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, apart from Poch, yeah. like, you can see even Conte's gone there, and now it's all a mess. <laughs> They're talking about top four. Great being, point, winning, like, the It's title. hard to get. It's, it's um, a good point. Jose, Spurs who's won trophies, top. like <laughs> Jose, who's won trophies at every club he's been at, he's still there winning. Like Spurs is very hard. But to be fair with you, um, Dan, I wouldn't want you know for the sake of the type of football that he plays, and also there's a reason why he left Wolves as well. It was like a mutual. Um, decision between the club and him, and the football he, that he plays is a bit negative for my liking. I would like one us more. to stick with a manager who's more possession based. Yeah, I, I like Bruno um, Large as well. Um, I like that Bruno Large and Houston Hurl. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. I think I think they're two decent managers as well. But it, it's a it's, it's whoever gets his Palace job, mate. He, he, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, you're a fool for taking it. If I'm if I'm being brutally honest. Even no, that's, that's the club bit, we, we love. It, is a fool to take it. But you're right. I, uh, you know, there's no, yeah. there's no your identity, there's no identity there anymore. As I said, as I said to you guys on the match reaction, no identity, no leadership. There's, it's, it's just, it's, it, there's toxicity, there's toxicity, and stinkiness that's coming down from up above. Yeah. You know, sad, to top sad it all off, to, and to top it all off, the seagull shat on us. You know what I mean? So like, like <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. The fact that it happened that after really them—that's their—that's their biggest trophy. The fact that they sacked our manager technically because we lost to them. Uh-huh. That's, we'll never trust me, that they're down. going on about it. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're yeah. going on about it. They're enjoying the moment right Crazy. now. Crazy. Uh, but, Crazy. but but yeah, it's it is it is a bit frustrating. But look, Dan, I appreciate you coming on and having your say. Yeah, thanks. Well. Dan, thanks, thanks again, man. Thanks take time, care, man. right? Take care, boys. Yeah. See you. Don't Take care, Dan. That was done. If you guys want to join and have your say, click on the pinned comment where you can join and talk about the manager, the ownership, the players, whoever you want to talk about. Vera in, Vera out. <laughs> Frustrated, upset, excited about the new start. Let us know. You guys can click on the pinned comment. Next up, we got Chris, who's been waiting for a while. Uh, Chris, you there? Yeah. Hi, hi guys. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, doing well, doing well. Sorry about the other day. I think you was waiting for a while. And uh, sorry about nah, that. no worries. You, you, you no, no, Chris, it was that was that was D's fault. You should blame him. Seriously, blame him. <laughs> How was that my he's fault? The, he's the producer. He's the producer. You're the producer. I'm producing. I'm doing everything. Like, yeah, you're, you're I'm, I'm getting over. I'm getting overworked. I'm, I'm sorry. About he's that, a DJ. Man, I'm sorry about that. I'm all good, sorry. brother. All good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Vieira, Vieira gone. Listen, uh, I, I, yeah, look, uh, mixed reactions. I. I I expected him to be sacked, to be honest, before the Arsenal game. But um, really, it is a sad day. I think a lot of the uh, previous callers have, have touched on it. Um, you know, he was set up to fail, you know. Um, I do question his tactics this season, particularly with play, playing players out of position. We've talked about in the past, players like Ayu, you, you know, right. his goal scoring is shocking, right? He still gets a game. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he was backed in the summer. And obviously losing the likes of Gallagher um, and, and the midfield isn't, isn't right, you know. Uh, even uh, Mac, uh, he's been injured for a long time now. But we need someone on the ball that just controls the midfield. And uh, we never we never keep the ball. If you look at our, it's historically, to be honest with you, but particularly this season, we can't string a, a, you know, a sequence of passes together. And that's been... I think one of the biggest issues, but uh, I actually guys wanted to kind of touch on the, uh, the ownership as well. For me, um, look, we look at, look, look at Parrish, for example, right. Um, I still have a lot of love for him for what he did for the, for the club. He saved us, you know, all those years ago and, and, and his consortium, but there, there comes a time where, you know, all that good work he's done for us, um, it can be eroded. And, and unfortunately now I'm just seeing, the other side, which uh, 
I think it's time for him to move on, but I don't think he will. But uh, I think he is the main cause uh, and an issue uh, with the with American owners as well. There's clearly uh, a lot of tension um, in the boardroom, and uh, it's creating a lot of uncertainty. Um, and it's sad to see because you know every time we feel like we're going two steps, it's like snakes and ladders with the Palace. You know, we reach yeah. an FA Cup final. We 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 do we achieve something so close, and then. Just when you think, you know, it makes sense just to invest a little bit of money, we'll get to the next stage. We we don't, yeah. and we go backwards. And, and this has yeah. been Palace for the last 20, 30 years, you know, unfortunately. You know, when we came second in the uh, the old first division with Ian Wright and Mark Bright, I remember that, you know, uh, as a young boy. But uh, again, we never got backed. We got relegated. So uh, I, I think that's the, the whole situation with Parrish is very uh, sad. The other thing I, I wanted to touch on, uh, lads, is is also, our, I question our scouting as well. I mean, look, for the last few years, um, we don't seem to like get players from certain areas. I'll give an example like Brighton. They've got, uh, you know, they've got scouts in South America, um, you know, uh, Fulham, uh, you know, as well. We we seem to get, so with all due respect, yeah, yeah, you know, look, so uh, yeah, they're going it, from. I don't know, is that from Japan. like a university? He was at uni? Yeah, in Japan. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? It, it's, it's uh, and we, you know, and we don't seem to get all of these. We, when was the last time, like, okay, we've got Wilf come through the academy, uh, you know, Aaron as well came through the academy. But when have we ever bought a player and then flipped him for like 30, 40, 50 million? Brighton have seemed to do it. You know, a few other, other clubs uh, get, get it right. But we never got it right. So... I question that. And also, we, th there seems to be a trend as well. I, I mean, um, you know, we seem to be going after French players or African players, which is fine. But surely there's got to be more than that. There's got to be other continents and, uh, you know, uh, right. players out there. Yeah. And we, it, it right. just seems to be that we're, we're missing the boat. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I don't think it's, uh, again, uh, with, the, with the whole board and stuff like that, surely, you know, employing the right type of people behind the scenes is that is the number one priority and uh you know any manager needs that assistance right and i don't think we've had the right scouts you know in the last couple of few years at, at all chris you make yeah, a great yeah. point because i'm thinking the one player we ever flipped it's gonna be you're gonna laugh when i tell you was Janet Go Galassi. Janet yeah Galassi, we got him in exactly the had him in a yeah. to ever Bristol City. Hold up on it. yeah exactly yeah that was it he's the only player yeah. we actually got developed Sold yep. on and it made Correct. no one else. It's, it's ridiculous. To, In ten to, years, to, only one player. To, to be fair, to be fair, we are yeah. in that period right now that it is going to happen. With Elise, Elise, Gay, Gay, I'm assuming it's going to happen in this period. But you're making yeah. a very good point. I was just thinking about it right now. How many? Times look at look at guys. Look at look at Brentford, right? Yeah. Brent Brentford have yeah. sold like two or three marquee uh, strikers. Look at their strikers. The guy, it, the guy at Villa, they sold. Um, um, Ivan Tony will eventually be sold. They they constantly, you know, they you know, they can't constantly evolve. They they find the right players and they adapt. But yeah, sorry, um, Neil, yeah, I cut Neil, short. Neil but yeah, it's, yeah, Neil Mopay yeah, as well. So look, we we don't <laughs> seem to. Why are we? Why aren't we getting players from particularly the South American market and stuff like that? I, I'm baffled by this. You've, you've I was literally going to say You're the right. same thing. I've, I'm just trying to think, like, South American market, like, I'm, when's the last time we have this? It, I, but that's what I'm talking about. I, it, look, I'm not going to come on here and and slate the players that we brought in, because we brought in some very good players. And we're talking about selling on these players for, for higher value, got them on good deals. But then again, I feel like, the, even with the mentions about Roy Hodgson, this is what I mean, like, when you look at Brentford and when you look at Brighton, I feel like they've actually got a system in place. I don't know what exactly Absolutely. it is, but I feel like they've got a system in place where if they get rid of the Zerbi, I'm pretty sure they've got their managers lined up. I don't know if they look at statistically. Yep. I don't know exactly how they look at it. But with Palace, the fact that it's Roy Hodgson after Patrick Vieira just makes me feel like it's just picking out names for the sake of it. There, are, there isn't any... I don't know how we're analysing these managers to keep us up. I like. I, I just don't understand it. Even, even in the summer, you can make that argument. We had... It was, it was varied. We had Sean Dash, Nuno, uh, Lucien Favre, and then Patrick Vieira. I mean, there's different styles of football there. If it's Nuno, that's a counter-attacking football compared to Patrick Vieira that we've got. So what was we actually looking for? And that's why I question the, the structure 
that we have at the club? Like, how, how does the scouting work? I mean, we have brought in some very good players, don't get me wrong, but it's from the Championship. We have to look further than the Championship. There's continents around there. There's tons of talented footballers that other teams bring in. And and that's why when I compare Palace to the likes of Brighton or Brentford, I don't think we've got them systems in place. I feel like it's, it's, it's way more basic than it should be. Uh, that's what it feels like anyways, based on the managers that's been linked, based on, a, based on even the players that's been linked. I'm not saying these are bad players, but... It's all a similar pattern. It's like we've got one strategy, the championship, or maybe over in France, we've got the core. But you don't even, I mean, Germany, Europe, Europe, yes, we got it covered. But what about in Asia? I mean, Matoma. Yeah, you can't, exactly. I'm sorry, you can't find Matoma. You can't find Matoma unless you've got a proper scouting system in place. And that's how Brighton got Matoma. And that's why he's highly rated right now, because they have a scouting system in place in different areas. But with Palace, I feel like it's very restricted in terms of our scouting based on the place that we're buying. Um, and and I think that's where the problem is. And I don't think Brighton are a bigger club than us all of a sudden or Brentford are much bigger than us. We, we should be able to compete with these type of clubs. And that's why I'm comparing them clubs because we should be in the same bracket. But it seems like in terms of our recruitment, it doesn't seem like we have the same systems in place. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I think, you know, nothing will change until we, we kind of nail the scouting system, you know? Uh, and we've got to learn from these other clubs. You know, it's there. Uh, there are absolute bargains out there in other leagues. You just have to look at the previous World Cup. You know, Japan did very well. They humbled the likes of you know um, Germany. You know, they, they they weren't fluke results. You know, South Korea as well. You know, all, all these all these other nations. You know, there there are some absolute gems uh, in certain kind of continents and uh, and different leagues. But we don't seem to explore them. You know. Yeah, for example, uh, Caicedo, a player that was valued around £100 million or they want £100 million and clubs willing to pay around £70 to £80 million, but Brighton didn't want to sell him. He he yeah. joined the academy from, I can't, I can't even pronounce the team's name, um, in the, in the pen, like, what country is this? It's a, it's, it's a team that we don't know. I think he, he, yeah. they're going from Ecuador. Ecuador, right? Ecuadorian yeah. league, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, you know, this is what I'm saying, D. They've got scouts players, all you know, over. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They've got scouts all over South America. That's what I'm saying. Bolivia, you know, like Ecuador, us, everywhere. So this is, we're missing an absolute trick here, you know. And and I don't think it's something that is, you know, is you need the right type of people, but it's not going to cost absolute millions of pounds to get someone in to, to, to do this, right? But uh, it is a certain skill set, of course. But... Uh, I don't understand why we keep uh, going for the same players in one or two leagues. It clearly hasn't worked. Or we, if we want to kick on, we need to look elsewhere, you know? Um, but that requires investment, though. I mean, we're talking absolutely. about data and analysis, but you have to have the team around that. And and it is a gamble, I guess, because you have to spend money. But if you want to push on to the next level, if you want to compete with the big clubs without having to spend about £80 million every window, your scouting needs to be on top. And I'm not saying that the players that we brought in have been bad, but then again, it's very it's very limited. And if it's the case of bringing on more data and, and analysts, more scouts, then we have to do that. We have to do that, to compete. And that's what frustrates me the most. Right now, we got we got rid of Vieira. It's happened. It's gone. Roy Hodgson is most likely going to come back, which is, I mean, for me, that's a shambles. He's just taking two steps back and going back to where we were in 2018. Um, but... I feel like the case of that happening is because we probably don't have these systems in place in the background, and and that's what and that's what it's that's what it's about. But Chris, look, um, before we um, we move on, I just want to say, what's your thoughts on um, Hodgson and keeping us up? If it was Hodgson, uh, I know some people are saying, oh, he hasn't joined it, but he's off. He's the favourite right now, so it's worth talking about him if we're talking about managers. If it is Hodgson, are you? Fine with that one and two. Do you think we will stay up with him? I'll be. I'll probably be in a minority, but if we get Hodgson tomorrow, we'll stay up. I haven't got a problem with it. I know that's the everyone's thinking. Oh, he's too old, or he's going to step back. But he's a he's a Croydon boy. He knows most of the squad. Um, yeah, we'll probably you know play in a in a kind of a, a bit more of a, a negative style, but you know. One thing with Hodgson teams, uh, and we've seen in the past, uh, guys, you know, we could be defending for most of the match and then we break and at least we get a shot on goal and we nick a goal and, and that's what happened. And he knows he's been there before, right? I, I know he had that stint at Watford at the end of last season 
and and it didn't go well. But I, I don't really um, count that to be honest with you. I think it was uh, that they were doomed anyway. I look at our squad. I still think it's a you know look. I know there's areas that need to be looked at, but I look at our centre backs, Anderson, Gay. Um, you know the core. I, I think there are there's enough talent there. I think he'll bring the best out of some of the players. Uh, get Zaha back going again, and I think we'll just. It could be one of those final day showdowns again or whatever. But I think we'll just be okay. Uh, but if if it's Hodgson, I, I would actually be fine with it. But long term, we need to get someone. Obviously, uh, you know we have to look at the whole club. You know, but uh, yeah. Yeah, look, Chris, I appreciate you taking the time and coming on. Um, it's pretty late on the day as well, but um, in the morning now, it's not even a day. Um, it's been a while, yeah. Um, but look, yeah, thank you for coming on, really appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Chris. Take, Take care. care. Really All right, thank you. That was Chris. Uh, next on, let's bring on them. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. That was that right? Is it yeah, that's right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear, yeah, yeah we can I'm actually, yeah, you know what, can I just start by saying I'm actually a film review show, which is an old channel, it's a dead channel, I'm not advertising that channel, it's just um old work I used oh, to do. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, me, it's uh, me that's been oh, trolling yeah. the, the thing, yeah. Can I just oh, start, before you. Patrick, it's me, <laughs> before Patrick gets mad, Patrick, oh, you've got no oh, right to get mad, right? No. I'm also from Taunton Heat as well, I was raised in Taunton Heat. So did you live right near, like me, near the clock tower? Across near Thorneath Rec. I used to live round the corner from round there. The a few oh, minutes right. from Tesco. We could hear, yes. we could, um, we could see the, um, the fans coming back from games. That's how I got into supporting Palace. Right. Because my, the, my brother supported the, Liverpool yeah. for some dumb reason. And then when I was growing <laughs> up, we were seeing all these Palace fans all over the place. And then I eventually, I realised our oh, Palace made more sense. We beat them in uh, the um, FA Cup semi-final. I was then right. hooked. It was a tragedy from then on, so yeah. <laughs> wow. well, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank yeah, you, welcome thank you. Show. I'm actually happy that you came because... I, I know, I you felt bad because I'm, I'm holding it I'm holding it down for the Vieira out people and I have to be very sensible. I know people are upset, but frankly, from my perspective, if there's any truth whatsoever in those coaching issues mentioned in the Athletic article, he needed to have gone already. It's as simple as that. The other stuff around it, I agree 100% he was not backed, 100%. I also agree that Paris should go, but not in the same way you guys are saying. It's more like it is what it is. It is. He's a Poundland chairman. He doesn't shop at Harrods. You're wanting things that he is not. And this sugar daddy is not coming anytime soon because we're, what's it, we're publicly listed. If we were getting serious offers, we would have heard about them by now. Parish really tried to get yet. the investment. What happened? They turned out to be people who want to want to buy other clubs. So sorry to cut you off, but we're not publicly listed as of yet. We're still it, there, there were reports about it about John takes a one. Oh, not yet. Okay. But he hasn't. Yeah. But that hasn't happened yet. So we're private ownership. And also in terms of buying out Parish, uh, uh, people have said this, and to be fair, I should have brought it up. But Parish only owns about ten percent of the shares. So. Buying out Paris doesn't solve the... No, no, it does, problem. it does. Because wasn't there that thing that he always insists on having that control in? He's the chairman. Yeah, the chair. You yeah, can't yeah, just buy chair. Palace. And so the yeah. ownership structure makes it difficult. It's not attractive to people. The person who has to buy Palace and solve all these problems you're saying is someone who's got mega bucks to yeah. buy out the Americans as well. And that's not happening. We would have heard about it. We've only heard about Gaddafi and Puff Daddy. That's it. Because we were not attractive. Come on, be real, guys. Growing up in the 80s, there was the issue with nodes owning the um, freehold for the land. Couldn't move anywhere. We had those two administrations. Um, even now, parish arguing with Sainsbury's. Come on, be real. So it is what it is. You're sort of you're arguing about something. When you say the board has no ambition or they're cheap, you're just stating facts. It's not actually an insult. There is the money is not there. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not there. So what is it you want? So where? So where? Do I want, we go okay, for? wait. Let me answer that question. I want to win a cup before I die. Is that too much to ask for? That's all I want. Just one cup. Just one. Not the ZDS cup. League cup. FA cup. Is that too much to ask for? Honestly, Dan, is that too much to ask for? One cup. So then you there? Oh no! Uh, no, come back! What happened? Are you there? Uh, what? 
I don't know. I don't know what happened. We can't hear you, by the way. Uh, I don't know if. Oh, no. I think my 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 want well. my want to have a cup rant. She must have run away or something. I'm, I feel really badly. <sighs> But that's what I want. I want to win a cup, D. That's all I want. Just one yeah. cup. Yeah. But but then again, Patrick, let's okay, let's, yeah. be to, let's be honest. To I don't yeah. know. I can't hear you then, by the way. Can you hear us now? I can hear you, but nothing's changed. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you can hear now, me? Thanks. Oh yeah, brilliant. Sorry, it must just be my cheap cheap ass um internet connection. Sorry. So that's <laughs> right. no video I as well. So no, what, no, what I want a cup as well. Right. But you okay. you guys are a little bit, I don't know. If I say this, I don't know. It was I'll sound I'll sound sound unambitious. But look Go at ahead. facts over the years. Palace right. have repeatedly punched above the weight from By since couple days. Right. Consistently oh, okay. punched above the right. weight. Consistently having players playing for manager um, for England. Sorry, current England manager is an ex Palace player all over the place. Right. Look okay. how many times we've got to the FA Cup um, final. So, do you know what I mean? It's not some um, a little thing. Right. Yeah. Look, it's just that, that money I'll, issue. Yeah. You everything you want relies on money. Everything you want. There's nothing that you want at the moment that I feel Palace could get without investment. So it's not interesting you mentioned that 30 million. Maybe that's true. If that's true that Parish sat on 30 million, I would like to see more about that and I can be more angry at Parish. Right. But I'm more concerned about the athletic article because that actually hints at a levels of unprofessionalism, um, poor coaching, perhaps even that Ocean Roberts shouldn't have been hired in the first place. All these things, I want to hear the truth about that because when you look at those performances, regardless of if it was a tough run or whatever, some of our players looked off it. Last season, Mateta, yes, he's not a brilliant player, but it was good enough to get a permanent contract. When you see him now, his bald head is shining after less than two minutes. Our players are unfit. They're, yeah, they're just yeah, even, yeah. they're off it. That's unacceptable. Because we're such an underdog team, the basics have to be right. You can't right. get away with not running, being the le least running, what least sprints, whatever nonsense. You only get away with that with Roy Ball, where we control teams like Brighton and have no possession and be clinical and score from our one chance. And we've even stopped doing that. So that's why Vieira had to go. There was no choice. He had to go because that was th those stats are disgusting. There's something there that needs to be answered more than okay. the parish issue. Parish so is I, a financial businessman thing that is above all our heads, unless we've got a few billion in the bank. So, but so you make a very good point. I understand the part, because I read the article too about the training, but then you bring in Hodgson. What kind of training and tactics is Hodgson going to bring in? Or is it just to keep us up? I think and it's just it. to keep us up. I think Parish has been so right. concerned that he had to get Texter to come in and watch the Brighton game, and that he's so concerned about the risk of relegation with Vieira that something oh, had yeah. to be done yeah, like yesterday. And the fact okay. that they wanted him gone in February 2022 means that those coaching concerns were already there, but the results did not necessarily match the concern. So you so can get away with... It, no, hold on, but you can get, you can get away with... Um, um, poor running stats if the results are okay you can get away with it oh it's, it's a quirk of this manager we don't run about much yet look how we're winning games you cannot get away with freakish stats like that no shots on targets since the beginning of time you can't get away with that if the results do not match hmm. so so you, it, it's, not, it's not reports, on. yeah so okay so let's start with the the report that suggested that there was on the verge of sacking him well serious consideration last year anyways last year february how what, how do you feel about that do you think that was right that his job was under serious I wanted him gone year? right patrick patrick not vieira i wanted him gone don't be mad I myself, as a Palace fan, I wanted him gone after that Arsenal game where they equalised to make it 2-2. And I'm not saying I wanted him gone because of his tactics that day. And there wasn't enough evidence of this. I call him a draw specialist. It was early days. But I was very unhappy about some of the Twitter chat where Arsenal fans were loving Vieira. Oh, take good care of him. He's coming to us. And it made me realise that actually, if Vieira does really well, he's going to Arsenal anyway because Arteta wasn't doing his on his madness whatever way he's going to win the title. 
it was, you know what I mean? Arteta, those rumours, maybe Arteta could be sacked. So I actually was like, I was turned off Vieira quite early on. I didn't think, ah, oh, this guy is the, is the thing. And also this thing about taking ages to hire that coaching team, it was all last minute. I wasn't necessarily convinced of Vieira. I was biased maybe because of the whole thing about the previous team. I thought, oh, it's a gamble. And it was a gamble. Yeah. You yeah. guys are saying there's a project. Let me, let me just make this one point. You sure. guys are saying there's a project. But Vieira was not integral to that project. He was hired last minute. It's not like they headhunted him for some special thing that would help with the right. project. So right. this big project plan is still in place and all big projects have setbacks. I don't actually understand why today it's like a funeral. I really don't get it. Uh, I, have to, I, 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 I respect your, your point about the Arsenal match. I'm looking at the at the um at the fixtures. We only lost two matches before that. We lost to Liverpool away 3 0 and we lost to was it Chelsea. Right, we lost Chelsea 3 0. On that run you're talking about, we had actually drawn Leicester before that 2 2 and Brighton 1 1 and then we went on to draw 1 1 against Newcastle and beat City away 2 0. So you you were really like he couldn't do much for you to be Vera in at that point. Right, I didn't want him anyway. There was just, you know what? I I didn't want him. I didn't want him anyway. So I'm revealing my bias. I think what cemented it, where I thought Vieira out, but it was too early because, you know, I'm saying now we're underdogs. So how could I argue Vieira out when we all finishing 12 and get into a cup final? But I'm saying I didn't want him. I wasn't turned onto his what he was doing. I was. I'm not liking it. That cup final, it's that cup final um, semi final v Chelsea. There are things going on around that where we had no midfield, where it was a bit, a bit shady, like players like yeah, Hughes and Gyro, bad, yeah. players like Hughes and Gyro who scored on that cup run, which wasn't that difficult, but we're Palace or so blah blah blah. I don't right. like stuff like that. As an old school fan who um, really identifies with the underdog thing, I want to see players who play well get rewarded. I, I'm not happy with this new school manager tactical wankery where they've got the iPad there and it's all stats and someone can be man off the match (laughs) three games in a row you don't see them again for another month I just it gets on my nerves new signing doesn't start until the next year or some stupid uh, some of it some of these things going on did not make sense and all of that is speculation I do not have proof however Those two um, journalists from The Athletic, there have been recent things where they've put questions to Vieira that have just cemented my viewpoints. The stuff about, would you ever play um, two defences midfielders? He says no. The that stuff about it, yeah. why, did, why was Schlupp not even in the, sh- the squad? For, I think two matches ago, I think, Schlupp was just dropped. They didn't say injured. So he was asked afterwards, he wouldn't answer. Didn't give a straight answer. Right. This thing about players just disappearing from the squad to me makes no sense. And I've said it before on your site where Vieira, to my mind, for a long time has not been utilising the whole squad. Gyro is probably a stonehead or something we've not heard about, which is why no one wants to play him. But he's good for one or two games a season. And every time he plays those one or two games a season, everyone says, oh, he was all right, he was all right. Then he disappears never to be seen again. And then you, you have this over-reliance on, on certain players who, I don't get it. Ducore himself picking up cards, uh, like collecting them, like he's trying to make a full deck or something. <laughs> that I personally think that is on Vieira. There's something, not, he hasn't got it right. I'm going to say, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I totally respect your, your right. To yeah, I respect it. I respect, it. I respect, I respect well, the comment on as well. I respect the comment right. on as well, because I've seen you in the chat <laughs> quite a few times. Yeah, um, I was getting mad. Yeah. I was yeah, getting, mad. getting mad. I was thinking, yeah, what is going yeah, on yeah. with this? No, yeah, you guys, still, man. Yeah. Admit, no, you're stirring. I I stir stir things up, but it's based on how I genuinely feel. I'm not just trolling. Like today, this evening, you guys, I thought one of you was going to cry. What is going on? You guys are talking about all the uh, bullshit, Texter's 30 million thing, yeah? And that's speculation. But then why aren't you discussing the athletic article then? You've not given equal weight. You've only given weight to the stuff that's sort of anti-parish, which gets my nerves. Like, it's like, come on. So you're pro-parish though? Just to be clear. No, no, I'm not pro parish. I want him okay. out as well. But the solution to getting him out is not the same as changing a manager, is it, though? Someone has to buy him out. And I don't see that happening. That's oh, yeah. why I'm a bit more pragmatic about it. I'm more like, you know, parish is annoying and parish will make decisions. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if Hodgson came for the rest of the season. 
And he was still there until he dropped. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Someone gets a last minute win and he drops. I don't want him for that reason. He's too old. He's, and Big Sam is also too old. But it would not surprise me because Parrish is caution first, safety first. Look at his track record. Fine. I want him out as well. But someone will have to buy him out. So unless you've got reports where there's a consortium from this nice country that nobody hates and Parrish is blocking it, I don't see what the anti parish stuff really is, other than yes, criticism, which is which is fair, but it's not so, it's not going to change. That's what I mean. That's who no. he is. We yeah, need, I'm anti parish. I'm still going to be anti parish. Sorry, I'm still anti parish. I understand. I, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. But also, we have to realize that parish doesn't own like ninety nine percent of the club. He only owns ten percent. I don't think buying him out would be as difficult because he owns the least amount of shares at the club. So if if we're serious about it, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to put, this is my thoughts anyways. You have your opinions. I respect that as well. I, I can't push on this channel with Parish Chat. Maybe it does sound like that. And I understand where you're coming from because that's my opinions. But I think we've reached our limit. I think we've reached our limit. The fact I, I that agree. we're talking about Roy Hodge coming back. Parish is not going to take us to the next level. I agree with you so 100%. What do we do? So, so what do we do to change that? How does Parish leave though? Does Parish get sacked by who? Or is it a boardroom takeover? That's the thing. I think it's on the fans. I think the fans... Whereas, whereas it's easier for a manager to get sacked. Yeah, it is. But then then again, it's easier for managers to, to get sacked. But then what do we do? So are we? So we have to do something. We have to talk about it. If you're not happy, if, I, if I'm not happy, it, it's on the fans. If the fans are vocal about it, the likes of Techstar, the likes of Harrison Blitzer, there will be more pressure. That's yeah, how you're I right. You're right. Be but we have been we vocal. Have, we have. Sorry, sorry. No, we have. Wasn't that game recently? Remember, you know, like someone was saying at the beginning that you're exaggerating the civil war thing, and I put it in the chat as well. You're exaggerating yeah, that civil war. Blah, 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 blah. Bring, However, yeah, a few headline, weeks yeah. ago, there were newspaper reports that Parish had not spoken to Tech Store for how many weeks? They were arguing. Yeah. Blah, blah blah blah. At one of the right. games, people put up signs saying, "I can't remember what the signs were, but stop messing with our club." Stop. Blah 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 blah. blah. Fans are already unhappy about it. Has it got to this? Yeah, about Texter. Because remember, he was trying to push that multi-ownership thing. And then when everyone said, no, piss off, he stopped texting. I mean, don't you remember recently, he was on there with a video what? talking about how cool the multi-ownership model is and players will come from my club and trying to think like the half and half scarf thing, that people want that. Nobody wants that. So he had to yeah, disappear for a while. I 100% understand that, but that was on Texter and that happened only in one game. Let's be honest. Even I haven't said it as much. Patrick hasn't said it as much. In this run of games, we haven't spoken about Steve Parrish. But now when the decisions are being made and Steve Parrish is the one that's pulling all these uh, plugs about sacking Vieira and bringing in Roy Hodgson and then, you know, this... I say civil war because that's what the Times headline yeah. says. But the civil war going on. We haven't been vocal as a fan base. I think this is the first time that Steve Parrish All right, you know what it is? I think it's different it's... levels, different levels of parish hate. You can't unite under a banner when some of us are sort of, okay. I will well, be on, on that pitch. On okay, fine, fair enough. I'll be on that pitch protesting with you with a placard, screaming, running onto the pitch like West Ham fans did before they qualified for Europe. When Hodgson comes back and we get relegated and Zaha goes, and there's no money in the tra transfer for any new players. I would consider, oh my God, this is what's going on. Because it was obvious then that you sacked Vieira with no plan whatsoever. Personally, I think the Hodgson rumours are partly a smokescreen. And also, if he comes, it's more just until the end of the season. If that gamble backfires, then it's a gamble that backfires. And you have to, there has to be consequences to it. But Parrish has gambled throughout the time he's been at Parish, um, at Palace. He's always gambled. But small fry gambling. I mean, look, you know what I mean? We, we buy a player, oh, it's broken our record, but it's baby steps. Yeah, but do you think we have gambled though? Apart from the Vieira we have moment, gambled. We, we, we're we're, think... we're penniless. Look, you someone needs to write a, a biography of the whole our period in the in the um, Premier League. The way we came up and it was all scattergun, buying all these players left, right, and centre. We was, was it was one minute we had was it Dwight Gale was our record. Then it was James MacArthur was our record. Then it was Benteke. This stuff about Parish, some of it is unfair because money has been found. 
But if you look at even when we bought Benteke, probably our net spend was one pence or something because we sold Murray and Gale. So we've always had that track record of not spending lavishly. It's always been there. All of this stuff is not new. Yeah, I, I understand that. But then again, did we have Harrison Blitzer then or John Texer then? Now we've Why did we get Harrison Harris. Blitzer? We got Harrison Blitzer because... Well, Parrish admitted he didn't have enough money to take the club forward. He was looking right. for new backers. And he also, remember that recently, not recently, a few years ago, they opened up their accounts and they were talking about um, how the Benteke signing had hurt them because there was no value added and he had learnt his lesson and he realised there needed to be another plan. So imagine this is a manager for a whole football club, not manager, a chairman saying, oh, actually... Uh, money just doesn't come from the trees. I've got to earn money from the signings. It's like he realised the whole thing was like a firefighting thing. I think whatever Simon Jordan says, if Parrish is that shrewd to have undercut him like that, I think the club would have been run a bit better, would have had more money. Personally, I think we were saved from bankruptcy. And since then, it's been firefighting. And late in the day, after Benteke, Benteke sh um, shambles, he's realised we have to have an academy. We cannot afford to buy another 25 million plus player who has no sell on value. It's just basics. So even before clubs like Southampton and Brighton were doing their thing, Crystal Palace were slowly realising they needed to do something similar, albeit on a pound land scale. And that's the issue. It will take longer than a lot of us are happy to accept. Yeah. So we talk about an athletic article about the coach problems. Well, let's say the article about John Texan making £30 million available to Steve Parrish in January. We talk about not having the money. If that money is available, then how does that make you feel that Steve Parrish didn't spend that money? Uh, because that's that's another thing. I feel like Vieira has been sabotaged. Yeah, I mean, that, we that, that feels, we it feels bad. Yeah. I agree. I would want to know more details, though, because it does seem like the whole strategy was get Gallagher. So was 30 million enough to get Gallagher? Probably well, not. Who's the on though? Well, who's the and on? And then, That's okay, the no, 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 no. But, look, hold on, hold on. So if the strategy, remember what everyone's saying, oh, we'll put all our eggs in one basket. That's terrible. And I agree. I, don't, I thought the whole Gallagher chasing him was annoying. It's like he doesn't want to come to us. Leave him alone. I hate that. If a player doesn't, yeah. want, cause, cause doesn't want to come to Palace, they can piss off as far as I'm concerned. I want players and managers who want to play for this club. So look at that time they were saying, oh, you put all your eggs in one basket. Where's the plan B? What does our plan B typically look like? Erdal, Rakip and that other tall Polish guy who we never saw play. Oh, yeah, that yeah. is literally our plan B. The plan B for Gallagher was um, a Hamada who came later in January. It's as simple as that. It's like we're slow. We don't have money. We're not going to um, give a brown envelope to the agent. That's why players always end up going to West Ham. And not just because they want to go there. It's because that extra little bit of money, the extra Kit Kat to make them go there to that club, we will not perish or we will not give them that extra money. Yeah, but it all goes down to parish. That's the that's the whole point. Like, it goes yeah, yeah, it, it does, it yeah, does. It but I think some yeah. of it is like his hands are tied by not having money. He brought the Americans, so you can blame him for that. But those Americans, yeah. as you guys have said, have got shares all over the place in other clubs. That means the chairmen of those clubs were also equally stupid as well. Yeah, but, yeah, but then when you're hearing that these Americans have put money forward and that Steve Parish is not spending, I think that is absolutely horrible. That, that is just scary. I mean, why would you have £30 million invested into the club and John Texer, John Texer... By the way, this is a very credible source. It's coming from the Times. It's not like it's coming from the Daily Mail. It's coming from a very yeah. good source. So if we're talking about the Athletic and the Times, I mean, they're, they're very good sources. So if we're to believe that the coaching problems were behind the scenes because of the Athletic, then I feel like it's only fair to give the Times the credit and believe in this yeah. story as well about John Texer. And so if that's the case, then... I, I Look... I was on here and I backed Parish. That's a wild thing. I backed Parish in the summer. I even, to the extent, I, I kind of backed him in January and said, fair enough, let's wait till the summer. Let's wait till the summer where players are out of contract, where we can start fresh again and we can build. Where I'm frustrated, of course, you didn't like Vieira, whereas I did. You didn't like Vieira from day one, whereas I had faith in Vieira. Where I feel frustrated is the fact that you didn't spend the money that was available and bring yeah. in the players. We know that we needed players. So I feel like you set us up. And it's not yeah, the fact that you set us up. It's, it's the fact that after all of that, Roy Hodgson is coming back to the football club. Now, if that is your limit in terms of where we can go, is in case of you get rid of Vieira, Roy Hodgson comes back in. 
that's not that's not good enough. Like, no, 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 but they're, 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 right coming back. Yeah, go on. Yeah, but remember, the project existed be- before Vieira. So you're what allowed to have setbacks. Yes, it did. It existed. The academy, when was the, when were they talking about the academy? That was before yeah. Vieira. They didn't start building it and then invite Gareth Southgate to open it when they hired Vieira. It was a known thing that they needed better revenue stream from well before Vieira. So this thing, this project that you're talking about was before Vieira. So they're allowed to have setbacks during this project because Vieira was not headhunted for this project. He was not. So I don't, you know what I mean? It's almost like, like he's become an integral part of the club. Well, maybe he has. Some people will be sad to go, to see him go. But I have to be honest with you, if it, some of those running stats, if you're telling me that's players playing for him, I would really like to see them having, you know, having him having lost the dressing room. I want to see what that looks like. Because this is as bad as Roy Ball, some of what we've seen this year. Yeah. At least so, under Roy Ball, we could thrash Leicester a few times, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, we did. We did. But uh, let me ask you this. If there is a problem between Parish and ownership, does that scare you going forward, though? Yes, it scares project? me. I'm very scared. I'm scared of either um, potential buyers being scared off, but I've been scared about that for a long time because that thing with that Parish thing where I always have to be the chairman, it puts everybody off. And I've heard that from multiple sources in the past. People who might have been keen of, on taking over, think, oh, but I've got to deal with Beaky. And that's already, you know, I mean, uh, that's a problem already. So I've always been scared of that. But that's um, sort of underpinned by the fact that Parrish has been there for a long time. Generally, he's a cheapskate, but he's kept us in the division. With those, the managers that he's picked have kept us in the division. Someone put out on Twitter the thing about, oh, is it a good thing to sack managers in the middle of the season? They should have done a separate one for Crystal Palace. Because if you look at our track record in the Premier League, many seasons we've started the season without with one manager, finished with a different one, and we're still in the Premier League. We've got, we're not stable yet. We're an outlier, yeah. but you're right about that. But, yeah, no, but, but just yeah. what I mean, we're not we're not yeah. a stable team yet. Now, the reasons for that, we may differ on the reasons for that, but people say, oh, we've had 10 years to do this. It's not as if Parrish was saving up in his piggy bank for 10 years to then be better than Brighton. Brighton, people, they've got more money from the get-go. You're comparing oranges and apples. It's not, it's, it's not the thing. I would, well, I would be scared about Parrish. Sorry? We got Harrison Blitzer. They are billionaires, so we, we have. Are they billionaires? They are though? Aren't there other they aren't are. there other clubs complaining about them as well? No, no they so, they so, are. It's text that's not billionaires. Yeah, Harrison Blitzer, trust that. Right. Even America, they're both they're billionaires. billionaires. They're billionaires. They're only like they NBA teams. Yeah. Okay, all right, fine. We got all right, yeah. owners. They're billionaires. Okay, but let me put this to you. When Parrish announced that he's going to partner with these Americans, was there the same fanfare as when um, Roman Abramovich brought Chelsea? No, not even. No. Close. Why was there not the same f- fanfare? Did anyone think this was going to transform football? So much money was going to flood the game? No. Why? Because even the way Parrish sold it was, oh, to help with transfers, to put cash infusion. It yeah, wasn't yeah, as yeah. if they were going to suddenly. Do you know what I mean? It's like. It was never sold to us like suddenly we will be buying 30 million players every window. It was never sold to us like that. Yeah, look, yeah, I 100% agree. But then Parrish makes these decisions. And as you can say, it seemed like short-term decisions. Maybe yeah, they're short-term. Texas, let's be honest. Yeah. The academy one was it's going to help us in the long term. But the fact that we're bringing in these owners just to help with the transfer window, is we need a bit more than that. One transfer window is we not need good a sugar enough. That's what I'm saying. D, we uh, need well, a sugar daddy. Where is this sugar daddy coming from? I... I don't know. I, I, Seriously? I, can't, I can't answer that. No, no, but I can't answer that. But there will be people interested. We're London Football Club. There's room for growth. We do have a core fan base. This this club is more attractive than some of the other clubs that's being bought out. We are more right. attractive than... Bournemouth was the, being, was this club being, as being attractive out. now? The way the club is attractive now with the catchment area, the academy, blah, blah, blah. Was it this attractive when it was owned by Ron Nodes? No, no, it wasn't. But we no. moved... To was it as we're, attractive... We're was it as attractive when Parrish was still arguing about Sainsbury's? Has he even resolved that Sainsbury's issue yet? Has he? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, it seems like exactly. it's starting again. But, but, but that's the problem. But that's the problem. We are attractive though now. We are attractive now. So Parrish's legacy, Parrish's legacy, for as much as he gets on everyone's nerves, including mine, Parrish's legacy is likely, whenever he leaves, whenever that will be, 
his legacy is likely to be making Crystal Palace attractive for this sugar daddy to come and buy it and run it properly. Mm, and that's a decent yeah. legacy. If you look at where we came from, it is a more than decent legacy. It's not something to be sniffed at. 100%. 100%. I agree with you on that. But look, really appreciate you coming on and having your day. Oh, thank I, you. I, thank I respect you. it. I respect Damn. it. Keep doing a thing. If you disagree, Patrick, well, keep disagreeing. Well. <laughs> Damn, uh, I'm leaving the show. He needs a co-host. You're hired. No, uh, no, 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 you joker. Patrick, no, no, we seriously. Your, Patrick, we need your tactical analysis. I'm speaking as a fan. I just want to see goals. Uh, what, you know what uh, I mean? I'm very easily pleased. <laughs> I could take Roy Ball if we're going to thrash a few, one or two teams, stick, stick it to one of the bigger teams. I could take that. The, what I've seen that. lately with the era, I can't handle it because it looks like some of the players are disinterested. That's something else. And you don't see that often for Crystal Palace. You don't. Right. Thanks, yeah, Dan. Yeah. Really appreciate you coming. Thanks, sir. No great, problem. Great Thanks, Patrick. Time. Thanks, D. Yeah, uh, yeah, up the palace. Uh, up bye. The palace. Thank you, bye. That was them, aka Film Review Show. That was good. I, I enjoyed that. That's what I want. I want people to come on here yeah. that disagree with us. Absolutely. It makes a good conversation and I hear their points as well. Um, but yeah, I need to go find our sugar daddy. But before I do, let's bring on Tim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's bring on Tim. He's been waiting for a while. How Tim, the hell are you, you going to follow that? How are you going to follow that? Do your best, know, mate. Do your best. Do your best. No, I'm just, best. <laughs> I, I, um, I really appreciate the show. I, I want to point out a couple of quick things um, yeah. because there's a lot of – I think there's a lot of worry about this that – I mean, I – so my day job is to um, I'm, I, I want to talk about Palace, but my day job is in analyzing stocks and businesses. So as soon as this texter thing came up, Got, the yeah. first thing I did <laughs> was go look at this. Right. I want to like see it. what it is. And so yeah. it's called Iconic Sports Acquisition Corporation, and they invested seventy five million dollars in Eagle football, which is texters. Um, Organization like all of his holdings for uh, Leon, you know, Potofogo, yeah, Molenbeek uh, for Palace, yeah, Molenbeek. for Palace for Potofogo, and now for um, uh, you know, Leon, um, yeah. all of that is under Eagle Football. So he got 75 million dollars in December for this strategic investment where this corporate this investment vehicle decided to value Eagle football at $1.2 billion. So, I mean, I don't know if that's $30 million, D, if that's, if that's true, like it's text or wrote a tax, check. Which is a, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Like, so I presumably that's $75 million. He had it in the bank as of December. So in January, you could just write the check and say like, go forth, use this $30 million, go get us some more players. Um, but apparently the the deal that I, I guess the civil war seems kind of weird to to use. I know it's that's been the, the headline. That's the headline. Whether or not that's not what I say. Yeah, I don't know. What, yeah, what I don't know if that's thing. true or not. But apparently the dispute over this is in that holding company, right? That thing that Texter has called Eagle Football. Can he have his actual palace shares? In other words, can our club go out like if this iconic sports acquisition company goes in and they buy Texter's Palace shares and he sells out? Now, does a public SPAC, because that was this is, that's that vehicle, does that mean a public company on the US market owns Palace because Texter sh sold his shares? And the dispute over that is that apparently this is this is what i've read and i don't know that this is exactly true is parish will not have that no way does texter get allowed to put he can have he can value the stake that he has in palace and that can be part of eagle football but hit the shares that he gets to vote as an owner of crystal palace that cannot be put into a public company vehicle that's apparently the root of that dispute, which to me, I mean, I agree with you both. I think that you could criticize Steve Parrish for a lot of things. I don't think you, the thing you can criticize him for, though, I don't think you can criticize his loyalty to Crystal Palace. I don't think you can criticize that even a little bit. And I think if Tim, this story... Agree yeah, 100%. Ahead. 
I agree 100. Yeah, That's again. I've never ever said that he's not. You know, doesn't want pass too well. He's not loyal. I my issue is is that he's not a big risk taker. He doesn't allow other people to make decisions, and 100%. we have not yep. moved forward. But you're right yeah. about that loyalty, to love, love of the yeah. of the club. He's about that. He's yeah, 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 I agree. I agree with I agree with Patrick. I feel like he's done amazing for this football club, but I feel like we've hit our ceiling. And and this yes. talk about you know Roy coming back to the yeah. club pretty much sums up where we are at this at this moment of time. I feel like. But do you believe that? Is this and just saying up though. I, do you? I do I, believe do you that, honestly do believe that? Yeah. I can't. We're not gonna. We but, can't. No, no. How can no, no, you but, take yeah. these players seriously watch. though? Let me just let me watch. ask. That's, I mean, okay. I know we could do that, but how can you take this team? these players where we're trying to play a more progressive style of football and throw Roy Hodgson on that. How in the hell is that going to work? See, that's my problem. See, that's my problem. Why do you get rid of Vieira and talk about... The reason why I do believe in it, David Ornstein, forget about in the Premier League, he's he's globally recognized yeah. as, as one of the yeah. best football um, sure. sources. He's reported it. And Aris yep. has reported it. So there's people at Palace that's reported it. There's reputable yeah. sources that are not connected to Palace have reported it. So there must be truth. There are lots of people reporting it and lots of yeah. credible sources. We're not talking about random sites that's just saying it. And these people won't report it unless there's some truth to it. And I truly believe that because the way that Roy Hodgson left the football club, he left on good terms with Steve Parrish. So he yeah. will probably do him a favour and come back to the club. And, and you know, that's where my point is, is the fact that if we get rid of Hod uh, Vieira because we're struggling, how does Hodgson get the, the best out of these players when he's not that type of manager? He's not an attacking manager. Our problem is in attack. I mean, we've been all right defensively. We've actually not conceded right. that many goals against top quality strikers, top quality forwards. So that's, that's where... I question Steve Parrish. I'm like, is that it? Is that the ceiling? Because Brighton, they got rid of Graham Potter. They brought in De Zerbi. They pushed on. We're getting rid of right. Patrick Vieira. And we're going back to our manager that we had in 2018 that wasn't good in the first place and that we had to get rid of him. Yeah. and it, So, fair enough. And I, I I hear you there. And we have had, um, I mean, if, if we brought in Roy, it is going to be low block lockdown football. And I don't know how that's going to work. And we'll just play for draws and hope we get enough draws to stay up. I mean, that's what it feels like we would be doing. And you know what? I mean, I want us to stay up. So if we stay up, you know what? I'll take it. I would hate it, but I'll take it as long as we get a new manager in the summer. But I, I do want to, I hate that we compare ourselves to Brighton because, and I know why we do. I get why we do, but I fucking hate it because first of all because i hate brighton but second of all because <laughs> i i just it, it's it's different it's a different structure tony bloom is a billionaire harrison let, let me say this like go back and look at the accounts right look at the at the palace accounts when harrison blitzer came in and this is 2015 2016 right you can go back and you can look at all the palace accounts you can go back I to trust company's you. house I trust you <laughs> all right I trust you, you go back resources. to Okay, you go back to company's house, you start downloading the financial statements, and then 2015, 2016, it stops and it changes. And the reason it changes is because a bunch of new shares are issued. It's because of the new terms for Harris and Blitzer. And they did invest a little bit to begin with, but where have they been since then? I mean, maybe they've been giving Steve Paris some money, but we don't see it. We don't see it on the pitch. I don't see it. Where the hell are they? Like, yeah. I'd rather they be gone. And so if they, if I would much rather, I mean, let me say this. If I, if I'm going to believe in Texter and I'm not saying I do, but if mm -hmm. I'm going to, and he's going to raise money through this Eagle football thing, let him raise enough money, buy out Harrison Blitzer, negotiate with Parrish and but like two owners would be better than four. Four is an absolute disaster. It's Nightmare. a shambles. Right. It needs yeah. to stop. Tony Bloom controls Brighton. He's a billionaire. He invests a boatload in analytics for that club. And much as it kills me, it galls me that they do that, but they are better run because of it. And because you got one guy, you got one guy that, that can do that. So I, I hate that we have to deal with this mess. I think Parrish is doing the best he can within the limits of what he's got, but I agree with them. I agree with everybody who's been on here talking about this. The structure is 
limiting us. I mean, do you put it this way? Like, what's the limit? I think the structure limits us. And I, I hate it. I want to see us do better. But I, I, yeah. I feel like I'm going to suck up a lot of airtime. And I want you to get no, to no, 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 callers. No, 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 but... no, no, hundred, no, hundred percent. It's been an amazing call because you know your stuff, especially about yes. finances, and Absolutely. and you're making some very good points. I really appreciate the call. But for you, let me ask you this. Um, Tim. sure. In terms of if the if the club went public, there there's a negative uh, perception about it. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a public club. We don't really we don't really see that in football, especially in England, as often. I know. There might be a few clubs like Manchester United that are publicly traded. Um, I think on a New York Stock Exchange, but we don't that's really see that. It's a negative perception. Um, so no, that's exactly. a disaster. So, I I think it. I think it's really bad. I think it's. So you, I, I mean, yeah. look, I I don't like. Hey, man. I mean, that's the, my job. That's what I do for a limit living. I like. Obviously, I like investing in stocks, but I don't want to see Crystal Palace traded on the public markets. Hell no. I want to see. I mean, I wouldn't call it a sugar daddy, but I want to see a progressive, engaged, thoughtful owner that wants to run a profitable football club and go for trophies. That's what we want. At the As fans, at the end of the day, that's what we want. I mean, I'm not delusional. I don't think that we can go for the Premier League, you know, at least not for a while, but we have every right, every right to go for the FA Cup. We've been how many times have we been yeah. to an FA Cup final? How many times yeah, have we been to a semi semifinal? We have every right to expect that that is something that's within our reach as a club. And you know what? I will do backflips and I'm fi- I'm almost 54. I will do backflips if we won an an FA club, an FA Cup. I mean, it, it's it's um yeah, it is maddening. It is it is completely maddening. So, I wouldn't like so to yeah. see that. Mm. I would much rather see you call a sugar daddy owner, whatever it is. I I'd prefer not to see a state owned club. But no, do not do not under any circumstances do a Manchester United and go an IPO. No isn't chance. that what takes are trying to do, though? Just so you. you no, what he's trying what he's trying to do. I mean, it kind of. But not really, and this is where it's it a gets spec, com- right. It's a spec. Yeah, this this yeah, thing yeah. called a spec, which is a special yeah, purpose. Special. It's basically it's a blank check, right? Okay, it's a blank yeah. check. It's a company that says like, hey, here's a whole bunch of money, and we're going to use this money to buy something. And there's a possibility that that blank check company could buy Texter's business, and then it would buy, and then the the biz John Texter's business, Eagle Football, would become a public company. And one of the assets of that company is would be his interest club. in Crystal right. Palace Football Club. And right. then what I've been told is that Steve Parrish has said, that's fine. That has some value. If you can raise money off that, go ahead. But you will not let your voting shares be owned by Eagle by Football. The, o- right. the owning shares, the voting shares stay with the club, which I... I mean, if that's true, I hope that's true. That's what I appreciate about Steve Parrish because it's a South London club. I agree. It's our football club. Yep. I don't, I yeah. want it to Fair be, I, I want it to be with the community that makes it beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And that's, that's why I don't want it to go public as well because you know better than me, but when it goes public, more time than not, you have to please the investors. You have to make decisions. Right, you, know, you don't want to do to that. The investors. You don't want to do that, especially with You don't want to club. do that. Yeah, no. exactly. Yeah, it could go It could go horribly wrong. You don't want to do but that. Look, we yeah. want to go for the fans. Exactly. We want to go for the fans. We want to go for trophies. Yeah. That's what we want. But look, but look, Tim, before you go, in a private chat, just let me know how I can contact you. We can, you know, especially the financial stuff. You know your stuff. Um, if there's any finance um, stories, it'll be good yeah, to sure, have you man. on. If you want to come on yeah. anyways. No, and I Tim, you know, again, time. again, back-to-back great calls. That same offer I gave to them for you. Want to come co-host yeah, them as well, yeah. <laughs> No fantastic. chance. I want to watch you guys. I want to watch you guys. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> Can't do it anymore. <laughs> Great right. job, Tim. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate you. Take care. Thank you, Tim. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Okay, that was uh Tim having his say. Um, yeah, it'd be good to have Tim on, anyways, if he wants to jump on. If if you can hear me, Tim, just let us know your D 
details in the private chat and it'll be good to have you on um because yeah we i definitely do want to do stuff to talk about finances in more detail with someone who knows about finances um but yeah um just to confirm tim is that your email no but anyways i'll message you um I'll message you. I'll try to find you there. Uh, look, I think there is one more caller. Patrick, are you still alive? Are you still staying awake? <laughs> hey, bro, two hours, 39 minutes. Let's go. I mean, this is the most. This is yeah. the, we just set a world record for back of the net YouTube. Uh, um, I mean, he hasn't content. stopped, though. For for That's the wild thing. It doesn't feel like three and hours wanna, we're talking about. And it. I want to say, seriously, to everybody that's tuned in, seriously, Especially thank you. Like, got that like, hours. subscribe. But seriously, you guys have been amazing just being in this long. Exactly. So thank Let's you Let's keep the channel growing. Me. Let's keep the channel growing so we can have more people and reach more people as well. So if you can leave a like and, and subscribe, it helps the algorithm. It can help grow the channel and uh, we can find a bit more, you know, uh, people to, you know, find the channel and call in and have their say. Um, as we want to grow the channel, we want the channel to be yours as much as ours um, in terms of, say, on the club. Um, there is one more person. I don't know if the name is Oi or Ol, um, but uh, let me let me bring him on. Are you there? Hello. 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 Are you there? You're right. So how do you pronounce the name? Sorry. Uh, it's Ol. Oh, double Ol. Ol. What? Hold up. Are you on Twitter? Yeah. What's your name? Um, Are you on? Uh, let me. Um, I'm just. I need to go on tour. Okay. Uh, all right. No, no, no. I thought I thought you did memes. The game attack three. The game attack three. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, wait. Mateta fan. Mateta army. No. no. The Game Attack 33. Oh, the Game Attack 33. Okay, cool, cool. Now, I thought you was a meme maker um, on yeah. just, like, the past speech. Okay, okay. Was, uh, yeah, yeah. But, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that um, is... Oh, well, oh, oh, the Bear. Oh, the Bear. Yeah, the Bear. Yeah. Oh, so you're Old the Bear? Yeah. Oh, old, yeah, I know about Old the Bear. <laughs> yeah, see, I thought you was him. I thought you was him. I thought you was him. Um, <laughs> how you doing? You right? Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> bit late very late oh, i just thought i'd give my <laughs> five or ten minutes yeah we've got a five or ten we want to put two hours and 40 minutes mate. We... <laughs> yeah we, we, yeah i mean you make some <laughs> great thought, memes i'll give you that i thought i'll give you, my five or ten give it minutes to you. Have, have you got have you mean. got anything planned have you got anything planned in terms of um, memes? what's going on right now i'm just just waiting for palace to win so i can make them <laughs> yeah, okay so you won't be making happen. a meme for a while Let's no, just say that. <laughs> oh, well, I made I made one with Vieira sucking, but it's movie clip. Oh, you made one? Okay, I haven't seen it yet. I'll, I'll oh, check it out. Check it out. But look, what, what would you like to say about the Vieira situation, the ownership uh, situation? Feel free. The, sh the floor is yours. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not one for giving my faults with Palace, but for for why not? Like, give my ten, give my ten cents. But yeah, it's a bit disappointed, even though. I knew it was coming. I just didn't know when it was coming. I thought maybe end of the season, given till the end of the season. I wouldn't have been against that, but oh, it's hard to find words. But I'm not like this in real life. But <laughs> that's like... fine. Yeah. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's... Are you are you happy with the decision? Are you upset? Um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mixture, like. I'm happy that no, I'm not happy, but I kind of I kind of expected it. But when it happens, I'm like, oh, for God's sake, oh, that came out a bit weird. I woke up. No, first thing I did when I woke up was check my phone, and that's the first thing I saw. And I, yeah. Same, I, I, same, I, 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 I same. I and, it, uh, and I don't know what you done, but. The, the thing about me is I had like content to film, so I had to I had to do a few things. I had to go to North London um and, and film with um uh, AFTV and stuff because we are, we already had that plan from before. Um and then you know then I had to calm down the work and then set up this stream. I've literally I I, I literally had my breakfast at 10 p.m. Believe it or not, <laughs> 10 p.m. Not 10 a.m. I had my breakfast at 10 p.m. I didn't have no water, no food until 10 p.m. That news just threw me off. Was you surprised by the timing of it? Um, I mean, I kind of am a bit surprised. I thought, I thought, given the Arsenal game, maybe at a stretch for Leicester game, if he couldn't, if he couldn't get a result against Leicester, then fair enough. But still, I kind of would have gave it him, given him till the end of the season, especially now that 
be a potential replacement. Mm. Yeah, the, the replacement about Roy Hodgson, would you would you be okay with that? I guess still you'll be able to make a lot of memes. That would <laughs> <help. laughs> oh, yeah. he'll, he'll my he'll my money grabber back in the day. Yeah, exactly. Well, you did you did, didn't you? You made a lot of memes when <laughs> Roy Hodgson was was at the club. So I guess that's a positive for you in terms of making content like that. Uh, but in terms of actually staying up and you know uh, forget about the memes for one second. Do you think Hodgson will be keeping us up if he was to join? And I know people are frustrated. Even even Tim said it. Like he hasn't been confirmed yet, and you'll be surprised if Hodgson does come back. But I'm only saying what the reputable sources are saying, and it's like it seems like Hodgson is the front runner right now, and we're seriously after him. Do you think Hodgson will be able to keep us up? Uh, I honestly don't know. Like I'm trying to what, trying to yeah. find my words, trying to find my words for this, but. It's like, you're, not, you're not yeah what yeah, what, just, what is it that what is it that um that makes you question whether he'll be able to keep us up i mean after oh, wait. just look at his time at watford it wasn't the same roy that we we known like okay you, I mean, you can make a case that watford were probably doomed from the start but yeah but this roy normally keeps you up i can't remember a time where he got a team relegated other than Watford. Yeah, it's normally meant to be safe fans. And then after Roy, um, actually, before I talk about after Roy, because it's going to be a hard question that no one's going to be able to answer. Like, Unless you have a particular manager in mind that you want to say, but I doubt it because I don't have a particular manager in mind that I want to take us on to the next level. Um, Do you have anyone in mind after Roy that you want to see at the club? I, I don't blame you if you don't. I'm just asking. I thought no, I'd no. ask. Do you, no, if, you don't. If, Di- if Deitch was still... Yeah, managerless, didn't have a club, I would have went for him, but yeah, it's the one, yeah, it's the one I uh, don't, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's at Everton, it's, it's going to be unlikely. But then I was going to ask you about this. Um, we've been talking about it, there's right of opinions. Um, what do you think about the ownership structure at the club about Steve Parrish? And um, do you still have faith if it was Hodgson? If it wasn't Hodgson, have you lost faith? Do you think we give him more time? Like, what do you think about the whole situation? Uh, Remember, remember that tweet that Parrish said about his uh, the fans' fascination about uh, old players, which was like 10 <laughs> years, 10, 11 years ago. <laughs> I mean, that's that's perfect. That's perfect material for you. I mean, I, I hope you're making something based on that. You must, you have to, you have to use that tweet to your advantage <laughs> if, if it wants to come back to the club. I don't know. Yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah, something like well, that. Yeah, but um, so, so are you. Still a fan of Steve Parrish, or how do you feel about him? Oh, it's hard. Like, I've never, I've never said anything about am I Parrish in or out, but I kind of, I'm kind of losing my patience with him, after, mm. especially after this. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy right now, especially with the mess that we're in. But any other last words that you want to say before you go? Any other thoughts? Or nah, that'll do. Oh, um, don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, yeah. sound up. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> live, live, live reaction with the, with the actual content creator himself. You would have thought one thirty a.m. on a Friday night or Saturday morning. Night. Evil villain. Look at look at Parish. <laughs> look at the ball. Look at Vieira. Look at him. Oh my day. <laughs> That, my friend, that's a great meme. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, look, look, Patrick fantastic. brought the meme. Uh, but yeah, that's funny. Beautiful. That's that fantastic. One yeah, we're going we're gonna to be with Older Bear talking about his memes. I mean, what a football club. What a football club. But look, I really appreciate your time. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you for keeping that up. Yeah, cheers. Oh, appreciate you, man. Take care, man. Take care. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I had to, sorry, uh, I just, I had to bring it up. It yeah, was yeah, that was, yeah, I mean, what a night, man. What a night, what a night. Oh, my um, days. It's been what are we doing, been D? Wild. What are we, do, what are we doing that's with it. the club, man? Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Um, I don't know what we're doing, but that's, a, the, the mad thing is, today is the start. I, oh, oh, it would have been easy right. if he was. Yeah, this is not the ending, was, this is the beginning, not the ending. You're this right. Is this is the, the yeah, this is the beginning. This is the beginning. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been an incredible night. There's been lots of, variety of opinions there's been people you know who's agreed disagreed 
had some financial expert as well. You know, we've had everything. We've literally had everything. So it's been like a therapy session. That's what it is. Um, therapy session um, today. But as I said, this is only the start. We're going to be here talking about the managers, who's going to come in, when they come in, owners, and more. But look, there's been about 200 people. It doesn't seem like a lot. Appreciate but, it. Um, we st- now we've got like around 130, 150 people, and we're talking about 1.30 a.m. Uh, really appreciate it. No, support. it's not. It's only 9.30. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 9.30 in your side of the world. It's going to be 2 a.m. here. It's early, man. It's early. And, I still got, and I still got, you know, and I still got things to sort out. Things to sort out in terms of editing and clips and stuff. So, yeah, this is my time zone, though, ain't it? After after end of shows, I'm normally awake at these times sorting things out. So, yeah, it takes a bit of time. You are awake, I really appreciate uh, it. You are awake. Yeah, 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 I'm awake. I'm not awake relaxing at these times. It should be a Friday night. I should be relaxing. Well, you're working now. You're working. You're working. You're working now. This is still the same kind yeah. of work you do. So, you just have work. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just it's the fact that it's not 9 p.m. But, Patrick, any other last things that you want to say before we uh, wrap it up? Because I'm pretty sure we'll be here talking about. <laughs> This is only the start, but I'm pretty sure we'll be here talking about, you know, all the rumours and news and stuff um, later on down the line anyways. No, I just want to say, seriously, thanks for everybody who tuned in. It's been a very long stream. Um, For me, it's therapy. That's why I do the show with D. I'm not going to lie to you. It's therapy. I get to talk it out, so I don't get to do stuff. I don't get really mad at home. I just talk it out. I appreciate everybody that's been on. You know, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe. But again, we had some wonderful guests on. Thanks to all the guests that came on. It made the show really go by really fast. I mean... D works really hard on this, and so I appreciate you guys, you know, helping out by coming on. But again, I'm not happy that he's out, Vieira out, and um, that he. Sorry, I just say Vieira. I'm not happy that Vieira is out. Hey, all Vieira along, in. all along, he's playing the character. Wrong. He's playing the character. I'm really what? tired. Vieira no, seriously, I'm tired. Vieira I'm really tired. I'm tired. Vieira I'm tired. out. You heard it from the but main man no. himself. The guy Vieira. that got super pat Vieira, uh, super pat Vieira at the back, still, literally there. Right. And yeah. it's never going away. I'm gonna have that on every, if I ever come on this stream again, I'm getting ready to be tired from this nonsense. Because without Vera, I'm done. I've lost all my, I've lost all my joy of doing Palace uh, stuff. But if Horton comes in, keep us up, and I'll see you guys next season. Because I, I, I can't with that guy. Everyone knows how I feel about Horton, no, but you know what? You'll be here, man. You'll be here. Um, no, here. I'll always support Palace, but I can, I can never support Horton. I'm not. I'm being honest. But it is. Yeah, no, it no, is. no. But you'll be here giving your thoughts, man. I know no, you're I saying won't. Right you now. think I'm joking? Yeah. Okay, what? Well, just watch. Just watch. Okay, you keep saying that. We well, just watch. Just watch. Just watch. Nah, you got. We, you we, got. We you here. got. If you I... got them now. You got Tim. You got all. Oh, you got plenty of people that can come on a host with you, man. You got plenty if of people. I, if I'm, you don't need me. if I'm going, if if we're going through it, you're going through it with us. No, no. Okay, just watch. No, it is give it. No, it is Just watch. Just watch. Yeah. Yeah, but look, um, that's it from us. If you have enjoyed it, if you can leave a like, it takes a second of your time. Much appreciated. Thank you to everyone that's subscribed as well. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in live. Thank you to everyone. If you're watching this on replay and you watch three hours of this, you're mad. <laughs> thank you, love you. But I doubt it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a bit mental. We just sat down three hours of watching this. But it's, it's been an interesting show. Interesting show, right of opinions. But we'll, we'll probably be back tomorrow at this rate, the way it's going and with all the news. So, um, so yeah, he will we'll, be. we'll see. He will be. He'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm Patrick Wall as well. But look, that's it from me. I'm Patrick. Thanks to everyone who's called in. I'm tired. Patrick's tired. We're all tired. But look, um, but look, I don't even know how to end the show. I can't even talk anymore. I'm I'm literally running out of energy. What do I normally say? Until next time, up the palace. Yeah, exactly. Until next time, up the palace.